Last time, Conscript Group 14 found themselves deep within the mindscape of their tiny friend, Lulu the Holophant. With the aid of the sinister Mad Maggie, they were participating in a ritual to unlock some of the troubled creature's lost memories. As they dove deeper and deeper into Lulu's psyche, they encountered more and more resistance. They witnessed the elven cleric Yael driving the sword of Zariel into the surface of Avernus, and Lulu calling down a portion of Celestia itself to protect it. They watched as the gleaming citadel became engulfed in a gigantic fleshy scab which hid it from view. Leaving that vision behind, they endured one more, this one protected by a monstrous version of Lulu herself, hell-bent on driving the adventurers out of her mind. However, they defeated the creature and witnessed the cause of Lulu's memory loss. Her beloved Zariel, now an archdevil, had plunged the little Hollyfont into the river Styx, thus erasing all she had known. Returning to the real world, Conscript Group 14 dealt with the devil known as Amanazro, while Mad Maggie and Lulu recovered from the ritual. They paid him the agreed sum of 3,000 gold pieces, and with little difficulty, he went on his way. A few hours later, the warlord Fionor, a powerful necromancer, arrived at Fort Knucklebone, seemingly in need of repairs. She demanded tribute from the adventurers, some of whom did offer magic items. A wayward spell of darkness, however, convinced her that she was under attack, and she blasted the adventurers with a fireball, only to find that they were unaffected. Lulu, her memories nearly completely restored, had recovered her aura of invulnerability and used it to protect her friends from the evil mage's magic. As Fionor walked out of the fort in a huff, Mad Maggie appeared. She was quite pleased and ready to discuss how to reward Conscript Group 14 for all that you have done for her and the denizens of Fort Knucklebone. All right. Conscript 14, you stand in the protective bubble of Lulu as Mad Maggie comes walking up to you. And behind her is the hulking form of her construct, Mickey. So, how can Mad Maggie reward you for what you have done here? Hmm? Any ideas? Do you need a way to traverse this very hellish plane? <laughs> Indeed you do. On foot is no way to travel in a furnace, or at least no way to travel for anyone who wants to live longer than a day. Have you any spare machines that you can afford us? It just so happens that I do. And I'm quite willing to give them to you in exchange for the incredible meal which you have provided me. So, if you will cast your eyes over there. And she points to one of the cavern, uh, one of the um, crevices in between the two finger-like uh, hills of, uh, or the four finger-like hills of Fort Knucklemone. And where you see a tent large sort of blocking the area of the back it shimmers a bit and then becomes transparent and you realize that that entire part of Fort Knucklebone seems to have been some sort of illusion and you can see inside a wide cavern in which there are even more of these red caps and mad caps scurrying back and forth and several hulking machines um, some of them seem to be along the same size as that which you see currently parked outside of the fort. And being pulled out of them, you see a large machine and a much smaller one being wheeled by five uh, madcaps, which are holding onto it and just sort of <laughs> pushing it through. The large one four-wheeled, about the size of a small bus. And in the back of it, there is, uh, excuse me, in the, in the front of it, there is a large um, aperture that has a crane-like claw hanging down. And both of these come out 
and are presented to you as the red caps and mad caps then scurry away. There we are. We have a scavenger. And here I can spare a devil's ride, which I've taken the liberty of upgrading a bit. And she reveals a sort of a two-wheeled contraption that has attached to it um, a little sidecar. The Devil's Ride looks like um, it's in fairly good repair, although it doesn't seem to be armed. The Scavenger looks like it has seen some better days. Its armor is corroded. You can see large sections of it that have been completely eaten through by some sort of acidic compound. And she says, yeah, of course not in the best repair, but I'm sure that that can be fixed with a little elbow grease. The problem is, of course, we need the parts. <laughs> if you don't have the metal, you can't really do anything to upgrade the armor. So you have to find that for yourself. But along with these gifts I offer you, several free repairs and upgrades should you find the pieces and parts. Now, that is what I offer you in exchange for allowing me to experience the misery that your friend has suffered. You have done other things as well. What do you think those could be? I presume you're speaking to the healing of your construct. Mm, yes, indeed. Certainly one of the things that could be considered a favor done to me and mine. <laughs> Anything else? I believe we've also been raised in the esteem of your fine familiars there, or pins and needles. They yes. spoke to our character. Indeed, indeed. They believe you are people that are worthy allies and keep your word. Interesting. Unusual to find such things down here. Worthy of recompense, I would think. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I see one, aren't we? I believe Typhon uh, had a bit of a mechanical assist. I believe I identified the problem with your other war machine that Chuka and Klonk were unable to ascertain. You look over at the Kenku and they look at each other and look back and they're nodding. They're saying, clean up time. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, then I offer for helping with my Kenku. I believe that is worth five soul coins. She reaches into a pouch on her side. She pulls out five coins, which she then holds in her hand, sort of spread out. Now, you should be warned. These things are very, very dangerous to mortals. I highly recommend not carrying them all in one place. So, Jax, you don't get to carry them all. One piece at most, I would think. I will take one. So will I. As will I. As will I. Jax, why don't you take the other? As each of you touch you are become immediately aware that this dark, corroded coin has within it something that is suffering horribly. Touching it, you immediately sense it pushing at its boundaries and its despair and rage. However, when you put them away, 
and are not physically touching them, the feeling subsides. Sean, is mm -hmm. there any visual differences uh, between the coins or do they all look the same? The only visual differences would be the wear and tear which has been done upon them. Um, they all look very similar in terms of uh, like a quarter or a nickel or something like that. Much larger, of course. They all have a uniform. They've all been minted in the same mint. Okay. Um, touching the coins, you can definitely tell that there is a difference between the souls. Okay. With time, you may actually be able to find out details about them and contact them. Learn names, learn what they knew, perhaps. But that would potentially damage the soul and make it not as useful for whatever else you wish to use it for. Now, in exchange for helping my construct Mickey here, I offer something that might be worth even more to you. Information. What would you know about Avernus? Pardon? No, uh, uh, yes. Um, what information would we seek? Huh. Anything that can help us better to survive. Hmm, quite. Well, then let me tell you about the warlords of Avernus. You've already met two of them, myself and... Fiona, who is currently parked outside. I believe you have annoyed her. Not that difficult to do, unfortunately. There are others. Please wait while I look them up. <laughs> <laughs> She's well, buffering her little rainbow. <laughs> so while, so while Mad Maggie at least seems amenable and Fionor seems detestable, I hate to think what other creatures roam the land. Alrighty. It does not matter their names, but what would their names be? <laughs> there are four that are worthy of note. One of them, Fiona, you have met her. She powerful necromancer. She has the vehicles that you see outside. That golden doom. Very similar to my own vehicle. Very powerful. It would be unwise to tangle with her until you are much better equipped. There is one named Bitter still, Breath. Yeah. How about now? How's it sound now? Breath, a warlord that Tested Mike. Mm, fell prey to politics here in Avernus. He's uh, used to be much more powerful, but has been demoted. Now he is a horned devil. Before, I think he was something much more impressive. Mm, he travels with several hobgoblins. Mm, has a uh, similar number of machines, although far more smaller ones than Fiona has. Lots of scouts. He is able to cover a vast distance with his crew. And woe betide to those who actually fall prey to his main machine. It is quite dangerous. Probably the most dangerous of all would be Princeps Kovix, a chain devil. He commands a number of legionnaires from Zahariel's army that have been mm, relieved of their command for various reasons. Usually such a fate results in their deaths, but these have managed to avoid them for some reason. Very, very dangerous. They are constantly on the hunt for soul coins. They are fast, fearsome, and come out of nowhere. He travels with devils. And then the last, the smallest, the most 
annoying would be a ragadaga, <laughs> a werebore. He has only a single machine, but it is strong, and he fights much like his namesake as a boar. He just runs right at whatever he wants with no tact or subtlety. If you are interested in increasing the number of vehicles that you control, I would recommend starting with trying to take him out. It would be the easiest. Although, she looks at the machines that you have um, been gifted from her. Perhaps not until you have been able to upgrade a bit. And finally, for being allies of good character and loyal nature, I offer you one free night's stay here in Fort Knucklebone. Now that our business is concluded, I would have to ask you to leave were it not for this favor. While you are resting here for one further night, I will see what I can do about putting armaments on your devil's ride. These three things I give to you as thanks for what you have done for me and mine. Acceptable? Say so. Excellent. Feels very generous. More than generous. You I know you... I should be the last person to speak on behalf of this party, <laughs> but I do believe that all of us are grateful for your aid. Allies in a place such as this are necessary for survival. And if we can be of further assistance to you, I believe all of us would agree to do anything you may request of us in exchange for further information and protection. Interesting. Is that an offer that you all agree to? I do not agree to do anything you would wish. We would certainly listen to any requests you would have and see what we can do to aid you in what ways we could. I see, that's far more in character and along the lines of what I expected. Well, you should know this. I am myself a warlord of Avernus. The resources here for such as we are limited. If you find yourself becoming too powerful, you may find yourself an enemy of Mad Maggie. However, there is a bit of an agreement between me and other warlords. I possess the only fort, you see, the only structure a base of operations. The rest merely roam the wastes. So, as long as they all stay separate and looking after their own interests, I am safe. But should they ever unite against me, I would fall very quickly. In exchange for not having them unite against me, I allow them to come here for repairs, for a fee, of course. I offer you the same deal. However, if I hear of you making unifications with other warlords, that deal will be off. We will be considered enemies. Understood. We aren't here to become powerful. We're here to accomplish a mission. What mission is that, may I ask? I kind of look back to the party with a don't think I should tell her kind of face. Oh, I've actually forgotten. <clears throat> Keep in mind that I witnessed everything that you did in Lulu's memories. Now you have to set an artifact. We're Maybe? not entirely sure what we're exactly after. We seek sort of sifting through Zariel's exploits here in Avernus to see what we can do to aid those who have called upon us. Can't, is um, is Elturel obvious, like, above us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, 
if you were to go out of the Fort Nakamon and find an elevated place and look out across Avernus, you would be able to see it in the distance, barely. Mm, okay. okay. And I it's about ten miles away. Um, she nods. She says, "Well, you should know <laughs> that I have very little interest in such things. If you are opposed to Zariel, so be it. Many are. Many have been opposed to those that came before her, and they will be opposed to those that come after her. There will always be an Avernus, and there will always be warlords. Who is in command is of little interest to Mad Maggie. However." This knowledge that I have about what you seek could be considered valuable. If you wish for me to not sell it, you would best keep me happy. And at the moment, I am extremely happy. No uh, desire to change that. Well, keep that in mind as you travel Avernus. Little things that you find trinkets, prizes, anything that you feel like offering me as tribute <laughs> will go a long way towards keeping me happy with my good friends. <laughs> yes, uh, good friends. Anything else? Any questions you have for her? Hmm. Anything else we could think that we might uh, lots of food. Oh, what's that? Well, you do right. have some rations I could give you. However, I would require a price. Free. There. <laughs> One soul coin, please. Ah. I think I'm all right. I have a question for you, Mad Maggie, master yes. of Fort Knuckle Bone. These soul coins, which you've been so generous to gift us with. Are there more? Are there, in fact, many? And is it only warlords that have these? Well, or can any thief get one? Yeah, very common once you get out into the wastes. Quite valuable to those who have need of them. And anyone who travels the waste, especially those who travel by infernal machine, has need of them. They are the fuel which powers the machines. Without one, you are not going anywhere. <laughs> but as such, the warlords tend to seek them out and gather them and hoard them. But they are not the only ones who have them. Indeed, if you find someone with them, by all means, attempt to get them in many ways you can. You spoke of Ragger Dagger as if he was a, a thorn in your side, or at least an annoyance. He is technically a warlord. Not that there's any formal organization or such, it's just that one doesn't like to be considered in the same breath as such as he. So would you consider it uh, friendly action if he were to be sort of removed from his warlordship? Perhaps. It would depend on how much of the spoils you brought back. Hmm. I see. And if we were to go looking for Rag or Dagger, where, where would he commonly reside in the area? Now that is a difficult question to answer, mm. as they are, all of them, constantly on the move. I see. However, I, see. I imagine that one or more of them will attempt to seek you out. One thing that the warlords are is extremely jealous of their territory. New players joining the board, so to speak. <laughs> you and your friends with war machines of your own. 
Soul coins, no doubt, to fuel said war machines. You would be considered a very tempting target. You will encounter them, I have no doubt. I would run, at least for the time being. I've always wanted to be a warlord. It has its perks. <laughs> Are there safer, less traveled paths on the maps of Avernus? Maps? You have a map of Avernus? <laughs> By all means, consult your map. <laughs> <laughs> she turns away, just cackling and cackling. And as she does, the laughter sort of spreads throughout Fort Knucklebone, and you hear all the red caps and mad caps just <laughs> they start laughing along with her. Most of them probably having no idea what they're laughing about. <laughs> I just want to kill them all. I feel like we're not in on that particular joke. Mm. I think we are all agreed on this topic. However, in the short term, we have a place to stay for the night, a place to rest, and a mode of passes for food. And at least a mode of transportation out of here. Do we have a direction? A heading? Well, no, I'm concerned. Well, I, I think I can find that citadel. Okay, though, though. Really? I, I think it's far, but I, I, I think I remember well. where. Now, now that I, I can somewhat remember. Yeah. Don't let everything that happened. Uh, I put yes. my I put my arm around Lulu. Don't worry, Lulu. Some things that you have forgotten will return, and we'll do our best to make sure you have more things to forget very soon. Oh, thank you. I think that's a good <laughs> snuggle. Thank you. I like this. And she snuggled right <laughs> into you, Silas. Oh, that's very nice. So, what all do you do? How long has it been since our our long rest? So we're approaching mid-afternoon now. Okay. Well, uh, again, there is no dawn or sunset, so for the sake of keeping everything straight, mid-afternoon, the equivalent time has passed for it to be mid-afternoon since your last long rest. Got it. Uh, uh, Persephone. Do you want to blow your tutor again? Get some rats for the road? Yes, yeah, some rats. They're very tasty. Uh, she goes into her pack to get it, uh, and it is nowhere to be seen. Oh, no. Oh. <sighs> oh, that was clumsy. Seven hells. When those... Mm, Jax, do you have it? Red caps. No. Oh all of our things. No, of course not. Let me check. I'll check my pack. No, no I don't have it. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> Just valid. Yeah. Lulu, at yeah. some point, you have been here before, and all humor aside, some type of map, at least of the areas, this is something that could be beneficial. I have some skill in this area. I would like to sit with you and Pick your memory. Okay. To see if we might map out a few of the regions at least. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. You have a map? I have a map of El Terrell, but I can make a map. You also have a map of Avernus. The accuracy of which we are not sure of. Exactly. Well, apparently it's laughable. Apparently. <laughs> what then do... Do we have any reason to understand that joke other than there's something we don't understand about the map? That would be a fair assessment. Okay. I mean, there is a very obvious reason why this map might be laughable. Looking at it, you see no sign of Fort Knucklebone on it. The only reason why you were able to find this place was that it was actually in view of El Terrell. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. My suspicion is that much as the rank and station of these demons may change, so too may the borders of their dominions, if not the dominions themselves. 
Elturel crashing down will certainly change yeah. some real estate. In the same way that anyone looking for Elturel and Faerun is going to be sorely disappointed, I imagine Indeed. we're in the same kettle. I suspect, though, that even as borders may shift and areas may change, who knows when a hellish volcano may erupt, that certain areas may always be next to certain other areas, a basic of geography. Like the, the, the river should always exist. In theory, if it didn't, and you I say that Lulu shudders. Bad was wrong. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Don't don't go in the river, Jax. I won't go in the river. No, you're not going to go in the river. Do you want to? <laughs> you want to take a look around, see if we can't get our stuff back? Oh, of course. Hmm. Let's, let's go for a walk. Interesting. All right. Um. um so on the subject of the map, is there a way, you know, considering religion, knowledge of religion or arcana, talking about the planes to see if that is actually the case about hellish geography? Or sure. If... Um, it sounded good, didn't it? It did. Oh, yeah, no, I like it. I, it did. It like made, made very, practical um... sense for someone who lives on the material plane, but I know that things can be a little weird. In, on... Immaterial? as a player on different well, planes. Uh, in case you missed it, Silas has just announced a private quest yes. to map hell. No, I got it. <laughs> um, all right. As you are wanted to do, uh, uh, Typhon, um, make a role that you feel would be appropriate in this circumstance. <laughs> Just overhearing the conversation. Yeah. Um, let's see if it. Let's use religion. Let's see yeah. if. Uh, we got 18. 18. That seems like a very accurate assumption. Um, the nature of Avernus being constantly at war, uh, huge swaths of it destroyed, ground to dust. Um, and then other structures being built seemingly overnight um, to take their place. Um, plus just the the nature of hell in and of itself, existing so much as a concept in addition to a physical space. Um, in many places, it's likely that the structure of hell is made by those who are actually in the process of witnessing it enough people believing in a certain thing or enough people fearing a certain thing or have something horrible happening could actually create a new landmark and structure on the hells itself um the fact that there is a map at all is uh quite strange and you do recall that the lady who gave it to you said something about its maker having gone mad Hmm. So knowing that Silas is intending to do this, you might warn him. <laughs> yeah. S Silas. Yes, Typhon. I would... Do you remember what we were told about the creator of this map? Only barely, Typhon. When I plied my mind and plied my trade as, well, as cleverly as I could to an infernal object, it nearly killed me. Logic was, well, out of the question. It did not exist in the same way that a puzzle on the material plane would exist. It was unfathomable to a maddening extent. Be careful with this puzzle, Silas. Lest in trying to put the pieces together, the ones inside your head start to come undone. You could end up the same way as this map maker. And it may be subtle and slow until it is a few steps too far to untangle. 
From what you say makes sense, Typhon. I appreciate your warning. In return, I would remind you, there are entire societies of people dedicated to chaos and deceit. Just as the denizens of Avernus welcome chaos and sow discord, so too do those communities in our own world do the same. You may never know when you're talking to someone that you should never trust and how it might affect your mind, Typhon. Even someone you've known a long, long time. I say this out of sympathy and caring, not to poke or provoke. All right. So, Falcron and Jax, let's talk about this walk. And before you leave, um, Eastland is going to uh, offer Jax invisibility if he wants to use that in an effort to hunt for our stolen belongings. Oh, I love invisibility. The last time I blew someone's head off. Yes, I'd advise you not to kill anything while under the effects of the spell. Oh, okay. Can you hear her, Jax? The what, sorry? I just want to make sure that that was heard and acknowledged. Oh, definitely Don't heard. Kill- no blowing people's heads off. There you no go. stabbing, no shooting, no poking, no prodding, yeah. no touching your dagger at any time. What about if it's to cut someone else's purse? What about that, Sean? Uh, would that break the spell? No, it doesn't. Uh, nope, it's not nah. an attack. Not an attack. Picking nah. a pocket is not an attack. Just make sure you're careful with the edge of the blade. I'm always careful. It goes exactly where I want it. Mm. Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, is that true? It's, it's only stealth, I'll fuck up. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, I will cast uh, a spell of invisibility on Jax. All right. And uh, I assume that Falcon and Jax begin to walk and around uh, Fort Knucklebone. Where do you walk? Well, I. So uh, my initial thought is: so in terms of the clusters of the red, uh, the red caps, like mm-hmm. where where are do they sort of congregate or like do we do they have like a point of origin or like. A, do we have, have you seen a basically I'm looking for like a barracks DM or like a a, a spot where they're c- more clustered than a... so I've described it before as an ant hills worth of these Got creatures it. Yeah, and yeah. it is very similar however I will allow you to make an investigation check as you sit and watch maybe Ooh, try and get an idea where they could hmm. all be coming from at the very least I want to start take oh, we'll start walking over to uh, Chuka and Clunk Mm-hmm. But let's see if with this negative one on my investigation. Oh, I rolled a nine. All right. Don't so, worry, I got a natural before, 20. Looking around, oh, well, Jack's got a natural 20 on his investigation <laughs> with a 27. <laughs> Jack's, right. it appears that there is a structure either inside this hill, um, which is shaped like a hand coming up out of the ground, um, or underneath it. Um, you've seen one access point. It is where Mad Maggie goes. Um, back here. However, that does not appear to ever have any of these creatures going towards it. The other one is past the illusionary terrain, which is now reformed. Hmm. And if there is a barracks or a place where they congregate, it is there. However, you get the impression that if they are there, then it's probably simply passing through um, in the same manner that they do here. And as you watch, you see that this chaos, actually, they, things are getting done. 
um, one will go by and adjust something on a, a wall or something like that, and then move on completely distracted. And a few seconds later, some another one will come by and change it a little bit in the other direction, but it will have achieved the primary angle and somebody else will come by and put something on it just as if it was supposed to be there all along. So all these creatures moving around at seemingly random and chaotic intervals, they are actually taking care of the function of the fort, making sure everything is working the way it's supposed to be, not as individuals doing jobs, but as a collective all working in this bizarre sort of conglomerate. With that investigation score, however, you do see in this corner over here, a group of red caps tormenting Barnabas the Flame Skull, who's looking at them all with just eyes just glowing. And they all have a little sack and they're tossing it back and forth. And he keeps looking at one and then goes, I don't have it, I don't have it. I don't have it. <laughs> you can search me, I don't have it. And he looks at another one and the other one goes and throws it up. And they're basically playing keep away with him. And he's gnashing his teeth. Can I catch it? Turns around. What? Yeah. Jack, let's it? go help out the flame skull. Yeah. Right. So he, he whirls around, his flame sort of doing a, 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 a haughty flame hair flip. Just, <laughs> really? The indignity of it. <laughs> and he begins to float back to his group. Can I acrobatically catch it while they're throwing uh, Oh, you want to catch the bag? Yeah. yeah. All right. So he flies away, and they're all sort of still catching the bag, looking at him. Ah, don't you want it back? Don't you want it back, Barnabas? That that whistle that you do is so annoying. Wouldn't you like to have this back? And he reaches in, and he pulls out a little tiny white speck of something, and then he puts it into the bag again, and they keep throwing it. So make your um, sleight of hand check to see if you can, or uh, yeah, I would say either acrobatics or sleight of hand, your choice. And And we're all close to this, correct? Yeah, there's really not much room in the yard here. Um, right. Especially with everything just sort of moving I'm around a million. Standing by to kill something. 23. Very well. 23. All right. So you jump up into the air as the bag is flying back, and they're all kind of. <laughs> and you bring it down there. There you go. What happened? I glare at them and say, You didn't see anything. Make it just uh, an intimidation check. Let's see. Oh, you're there as well. Oh, I'm hidden. So that's a seventeen. Yeah. yeah. So this is all happening, kind of. I'm in drawing a, attention to myself. Seventeen. Yeah. All right. Ah. Mm, well, I'll say it to you. <laughs> Watch where you sleep tonight. Yeah, we'll be creeping up. We'll be creeping up. Right. Why wait? Uh, uh, well, um, we're busy. Yeah, we're busy. Really busy. We've got lots of things to do, including kill you later. Yes, kill you later. Ah, and they scatter back and forth. I guess we'll know where to find them tonight. Mm. Nice catch, Jax. Oh, I didn't catch anything. <laughs> I'll have a look in the uh, bag. There is a tooth in it. Yeah. You recall Barnabas, this flame skull, is missing a tooth, which is the cause of his oh. speech impediment. I'll go. Oh, it's a tooth. Well, I, I don't. May I see that? 50 gold. All right. I say, you owe me 50 gold. No, oh, that didn't work out very well. I'll hand over the that sounds like a fine deal, yes. <laughs> take oh, it. Yeah. Right. You can take up that debt with t Typhon. He owes me Okay, lots. okay. So Typhon owes me 50 gold. Got it. That's correct. All right. Sounds good. Aren't you holding Typhon's gold, Jax? Oh, no. No, he's holding my gold. He owes well, me wait, gold. No. So if you're holding the gold, Jax, you technically owe me 50 of Typhon's gold. That's right. Oh, no. He's got to pay me when we get back. Well, then tell you what. Tell you what. Hey, you, you hand me the tooth and we'll sort this out later. Okay. Lulu comes flying uh -huh. over. Silas, I hope. I thought we were going to be working on the map. And as she flies over, Jax, you become visible. Oh, hello. <laughs> I found myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, when, when you have a moment, Lulu. Sorry. Sorry about that. And she begins and oh. invisibility comes back on. Oh, I've got a kid. 
Well, no idea where is. I went. We It'll just be invisible, Gold Falcon. Uh, uh. You mean walk away? This is hard to do. <laughs> of course, Jax. Let's take a walk. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head over to uh, Barnabas's uh, tent, or at least the tent that I've seen him go in and out of. All right. You walk into the tent and it is filled with a variety of alchemical contraptions, alembics, uh, beakers, bubbling away. There's a few uh, uh, open flames. And Barnabas actually has a strange contraption in his mouth. It looks like it's been formed out of several different pieces of metal designed to fit into his mouth so that when he closes it, it opens a hand on the other end with which he can manipulate things moving around in this tent. Uh, and you see him carefully pouring the contents of one beaker into another, and there's a an acrid smell. And he come, looks back at you and says, <laughs> he goes over, puts down the contraption and says, this is my private tent. I... Apologize for the intrusion. I thought you might want this. <gasps> you have found my tooth. Actually, uh, my goblin friend acquired it for you. Uh, he's very handy like that, but uh, you... I see. I have no idea where he is. Who said that? Um, no idea. Well, what do you want for my tooth? The oh. fiendish creatures have no desire to... Return it to me. I have offered them quite a few things, and they have refused. They enjoy tormenting me too much to give it back. Well, so I I would happily return it to you for a ring of invisibility uh, for whatever <laughs> you were wishing to offer the red caps. Uh, we, my party, seeks any aid we can. Well, I have several potions here, which oh. you are welcome to peruse. Why? Well, I thank you. Any magic? But do you need help putting this back in? How much would that cost me? Well, a ring of take prote a protection. I've heard of them. <laughs> Very well. If we are negotiating, if you put the tooth in, are you a dentist? Uh, I do have some medical skill. That's amazing. Well, if you put the tooth back in my head properly, I will allow you to take any two potions. And I will also give you information, I think, on where the red caps usually store their ill-gotten gains. They now, were not storing my tooth there. Woe's me. I enjoyed playing with it too much. But... Do you know that even teeth is a type of... Um... Are you there? Operation, a uh... is, is Silas there? That's no, a, Silas. That's is, is, Silas, no, I don't, I don't not, know that. Oh, I don't not. know that you were there. Yeah, okay. yeah, no. You, yeah, you, and, you he's and, and bloody quick tapping us again. Yes, yeah. jeez. <laughs> you, uh, yes. Lulu is I with you. Yeah. Okay, Lulu is with you, that. getting ready to do the map thing. Okay, so if you want to go over, but then she didn't say we were doing it. So okay, good. We'll finish this, and then you and her can do the map thing. You know, you are welcome to go find them if you wish, but. Um, oh, no, I, d I didn't realize that I was completely with Lulu at that time. She flew over. I missed it. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So they've gone off by themselves. You think. <laughs> um, um, so. Yes. Two potions and information. What information? That sounds mo the information of our stolen goods, which we can recover. And anything else they may have procured. I wish you had come to me sooner with this. I would have been able to put in a good word for you with Mad Maggie. Happy to help when we can help. That's very kind of you. We couldn't so, find the sign quest. What? The what? Side quest. <laughs> How very strange. Where would you start? Um, <laughs> very well. Um, Quince. Very well then. All right, make a medicine check. Don't mind if I do. It's very hot in his mouth as the green flames are flying around. All right, so, so it is difficult. Whew, all right, so its initial was a 13. 
that is not high enough, I'm afraid. Mm. And you put it in, and it is a little oh. crooked. I want to hear that voice. <laughs> hmm. It's so good to have my tooth back. Tooth back. Tooth. Well, that's strange. It doesn't seem to have fixed anything. Well, it's are, you uh, very, are you certain this was my tooth? Oh, no. I was... It was the tooth that they were throwing about. Uh, if I may attempt again, perhaps, with a slight adjustment? You... Oh, let Maybe me have a go. Can I use slight of hand? <laughs> I suppose you'll have to remove it again. Can I use slight of hand to do it? Will that hurt? It's. It, of course it will hurt. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right. So. Um, so shall we knock you out beforehand? I don't no, think no, knocking him out is good. No, no. All right, all right, all right. It's a, make sure you get the right one. Of, well, of course. It's the one that's crooked. Can yes. I aid him? Crooked? Oh. Slight of hand. I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right. Hey, um, all right. So. Whew, steady hands. So make, a, uh, make an attack roll, please, to knock the tooth out. Oh. oh. Well, lovely. Uh, I imagine an unarmed strike? Or can mm, I use. However you wish to do it. <laughs> I mean, I could use the warhammer. You but could. That seems a bit much. Go get Saiyan. Especially since it harms you... undead. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> what, is, what is this? An infernal croquet? Just. just... <laughs> it's like, oh, well. Solve the problem. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I highly recommend not using the various things that will harm undead. And you remember at this moment that you do have one in your group that has gone by the name the Night Surgeon. Hmm. But by all means, make your attempt. Mm. (laughs) I mean, the tooth has to come out. Yeah. Make your attack. All right. Swing in that uh, unarmed strike of 10. (laughs) God. (laughs) <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh, that. Wait a minute. What have you done? <laughs> That's a different tooth! Now I'm missing. Oh. So both it and the original tooth and another one have come out <laughs> and he's just hovering up and down. You imbecile! All right, all right. Have right, you been right. so stupid? Look, look, look. I've, I've, I've never. I Get out! Get out immediately! Ah. Two, but just one second. One second. All right. Uh, Jax, get Typhon. I'm, Fifty go. What are you? I'm warning you. I'm very close to losing my temper. Oh, I understand. I understand completely. I understand. Here, let, let me up. Here's one tooth, two. He fell in my possession. That's that's better than nothing. This is, this is insufferable. I how am I supposed to summon the necessary gravitas? I thought, oh, this is. Mm. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. I, I have a colleague who's uh, very very good at dentistry. Uh, you know what? You know what it is. The skull was so old that it had petrified. It's partial stone, hence yeah. Falkrin's failure. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'll have Go one final tenth. Of course, of course. <clears throat> I'll guide you, Falkrin. So uh, sitting there, hovering, looking at you, just like glaring. Just... So, um, what do you do for fun? <laughs> I like brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I used to enjoy taking care of my teeth. <laughs> Floss. <laughs> Infernal braces. So, uh, right. Typhon, Jax, uh, you feel an invisible tug on your robe. It's me. What? It's Jax. What? I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, F- Falcon's been knocking people's teeth out. We need your help. Just, all right, lead me there. Or tell me where to go. Follow me. I'll walk off. <laughs> no. <laughs> as you I do, know you're smarter than that. As you do, you walk past Lulu and you become visible in Typhon. You see... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I am. Walking away. <laughs> he walks out of the aura again and disappears again. You can definitely see he's heading towards the uh, tent where you've seen the flame skull. 
All right. I will go there then and walk in the tent. Obviously, the first thing of interest being the supplies and the potions and stuff, but looking around soon. Now, now, who are you? This is my good friend, Typhon, the night surgeon. Typhon, I require your help in assisting Barnabas here. He has offered kindly to give us uh, two potions and some information uh, if we can put his teeth back in. Yes, I am less inclined to do those things as I once was, but I suppose... <clears throat> I suppose you have not had much experience working on flame skulls. Ah, unfortunately. Well, yes, I thought Were you... Much. Was he a human? <laughs> Is it, can I tell? Hmm? By looking at the skull? Yes, he was. Okay. Well, your skull is human enough. Shouldn't be too difficult. How did you manage? Never mind. All right. Look, Let's I'm... take a look. A bit, I just wanted to say to chat that this is going to be a natural one. Yeah. Don't I, you I, dare. I'm, well, so I'm, 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 I'm hoping somebody there has medicine proficiency to so, assist. So I have medicine proficiency, which is why this has been going so. I do swimming. too, but you're way better at medicine than I am because of the way that stats work in D and D. Well, <laughs> then, by God, can can I roll with advantage, or uh... you can also guidance yourself. <sighs> oh, just guidanced myself. There you go. <laughs> so, with Typhon's help. With a roll of an advantage and guidance. Oh, God, and I will point out that roll. he has no. He's, it's not a living thing. You don't. It's not like resetting a bone. I have a feeling that if it is placed in the right spot, it'll just. We might need to bandage it a bit, and his natural regenerative ability will hold it in. All right. Don't I try to someone... socket it too hard. All right. All right. All right. All right. Someone I... with some intelligence. I already tried the socket method. It didn't work. Excellent. That's what I 20... said. Don't try to suck it. Okay. No, so I we go. No. Just keep it right there. Keep it right there. Just one second. It'll, I'm adding the little stick. All right. All right. Just give it time. Uh, Just stop uh, breathing over me. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it in? Is it good? The, um, and done. You don't have to talk like that. You don't have any lips to begin with. What? Ah. Aha. Yes, yes, ha, yes, finally, oh, oh, I'm overjoyed. Yes, I know I don't have to speak with my mouth, I prefer it. So, because that was two teeth, that's four potions. No, 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 what, no, no, uh, no, 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 please. Is that I have here works? a potion of healing, a potion of invisibility, a potion of heroism, and a potion of protection against poison. Take your pick. Uh... Typhon, I would defer to you in terms of what would be a better use. I would mm. think healing would be the obvious one, but... Well, those, no we magical keep items. finding those falling out of our packs all the time. I don't think that's that, true. That's true. We don't do think find that rare anymore. Rolling about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one right I would now. say the potion of heroism, certainly. Mm. That is a powerful... Powerful one. Indeed. And uh, what was the first one again? Uh, potion of invisibility, potion of healing, potion of heroism, and potion of protection from poison. Invisibility and heroism, without question. Lovely. Very well. I will, uh, let's see. How does one show this? Can I look around for anything else in here? Um, yeah, make an investigation check. But he is watching you. Oh, I'm not uh, being... Barnabas, you mentioned information to the, uh, the whereabouts of ill-gotten goods from the Red Caps. Oh, yes. Um, I don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. The Mad Caps and the Red Caps store all number of things within the walls themselves. If you are looking for anything they might have stolen from you, I highly recommend searching there. Wait, in the stone walls? No, they're not stone. They're made of metal, wood, garbage, and things they've picked up. Thank the gods. All right. <clears throat> you should be careful with phrases like that down here. Just a friendly reminder. Ah. 
Thank you. But I hope that uh, we don't encounter each other again as enemies. Seems more likely than not. But at I, least at this moment, I'm grateful for your assistance. I thank you for the information. 26 investigation. Um, well, there is any number of things in here that could be useful. <laughs> Several potions that are unfinished. Um, some that seem to be finished that are uh, behind... Um, they're like in in a box and sequestered away. Um, you see a couple of books. Um, there is a large uh, a large um, ornate quill. Looks like a, some sort of golden bird, but the quill itself is massive. Hmm. Is there anything for me? Sound. Look magical, I like the spider wouldn't know. Um, as far as you know, everything in here is magical. Was there anything else? I was hoping I could speak to you for a moment once my companions go about their recovery mission. No, of course, of course. Uh, I believe Jax and I were just leaving. R All right. Right, Jax? Jax? Yeah, I'm here. I'm only joking. Oh, I was looking around. There's lots of stuff in here. It's really cool. Yes, keep, yes, I believe there is an invisible creature here, and I would thank you very much to keep his hands to himself. I do my absolute best. All right, Jax, come. We've work to do. I, oh. He begins to look around very carefully at all the things on the uh, the shelves. <laughs> is he looking for me? Because I'm standing over here. No, he's looking to make sure you haven't taken it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Lee knows that. But... <laughs> all right. So let us quickly. All right. Let's see. We'll uh, go to Lulu and um yeah. and Silas. Yeah. So what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> We're making a map, Lulu at least of the major areas or regions. Okay. Well, that's really hard, but I think you can remember some of it, at least. We'll start off. We have this map. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see here. I pull out the map of Avernus, which is in my list of things. Yes, indeed. All right. Okay, well... I don't really know where we are on this map. I don't see anything that looks like a big hand. Do you? Hmm. I don't, but perhaps a, a river. You mentioned the river is bad. Perhaps we could start with that. Does the river run through the whole of Avernus? Well, I don't think I've seen all of Avernus, but yeah, I think so. I think I, think I heard people say that. It, connects all the hells and, and other places as well. What do you mean it connects all the other places? Well, hmm. So, we, you know there's the material plane, that's where you're from. And then there's the celestial plane, that's where I'm from. This is the infernal plane. These are the hells. It can be difficult to travel between the planes. You need powerful magic. Like, um, uh, like what Cork and Pebble Moss did. Indeed. A fine but, fellow, that one. A bit misunderstood. But if you try to travel from the planes to other places, sometimes it doesn't work out. But I think that this river, somehow, it connects all of them. It connects hells and the abyss and Gehenna I think and if you travel on the river you can eventually get to all of them but you mentioned to not touch the river lest I mean certainly one could be driven mad staying in this place for too long it I'm, must be akin to being some type of I don't know, hellish opera, but you seem to indicate that the water itself of the river would be bad. Yes. 
very bad. Very dangerous. You'd need a very strong boat. In any event, what what are the realms that you know about here? I, I mean, we heard about these war warlords, but really I don't think them. they I don't think they determine the geography. What about um, do you know the name Glacia? Oh, that's another really bad one. We won't speak it too much. What do you know of that name? She rules one of the layers of hell, I think. Really? Yeah, but she's worse than Zarya, I think. <laughs> Which is good, really? I guess. I guess it's good to think that there's other things that are worse than her, but... Yeah, the, the more down you go, the more powerful the warlords become. And, and all the warlords above them have to obey them. Now, can these machines take us to other places? I've never seen these machines before. They feel awful. And that, that coin that you took, Zion, is so bad. I don't like the coin at all, Lulu. It will hurt you. I believe you. But if that name that I spoke is not on this layer, then let us not think of that one anymore. What do you know about this land? Uh, other than Zario, is it... Are there other demons or, or is it just a plane of dust and fire it's a plane of dust and fire battles remnants of battles deserts of ground bone it is a place for souls to come and fully express their natures, especially if they're evil. Once they've expressed themselves enough, then they can be sorted into a proper hell. So this in and of itself is a lobby? Sort of. Hmm. I've heard that of another place. Once heard of a place on a coast that was called Heaven's Waiting Room. Hmm. Sounds nice, but I have a feeling it isn't. Hmm. They have a wonderful facility there for the performing arts, I've heard. But in any event, uh, Lulu, what, what do you know about Avernus that can be helpful, map or not? Well, I think maybe you should talk to Corcoran Pebble Moss. Sorry, this. I, I have my memory. I, I think I can f find where the Citadel is. But we'll need to find a landmark to go from first. This one, I can remember remember being here but it's not on this map so I can't really use the map to show you where we should go I, I have to just go by memory I trace my steps do you think you could guide us Lulu oh yes yes I will and what is your speed compared to those machines I don't know I can go very fast I and I can fly, it. which will be a lot better in certain circumstances. Hmm. I wish we all could fly that way. Me too. You For now, Lulu, I'm, I'm going to stare. I, I can't now. I'm going to stare at this map until it makes sense 
or I don't. Okay. You want any help? If you know anything about it, please look at it with me. I don't. But I can help. Well, you know what, Lulu? Just stay near me. And we can help each other. Uh, As you observe the map, please make a will saving throw at advantage. How do I do that in 5e? You click on... uh, What? (laughs) Wisdom. Oh, you asshole. (laughs) It will always be will saves. It will never be nothing at the 12. You needed that advantage. (laughs) That's what you get. That's That's, that's it. (laughs) As you are watching, reading this map, you begin to hear a voice in your head. Ah, you have found my map. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it's a very good map, very good map. I uh, spent so much time working on it. Uh, everywhere you go, whenever you set foot into a place that's on the map, you will hear my voice, and I will tell you things about the place. <laughs> but where are you now? Where are you now? You're not on the map. This place, where is it? It's not on the map. I didn't put this place on the map. I'm so sorry. My map is incomplete. I tried so hard to put everything on the map. <laughs> There's just too much, too much. Um, because you rolled a 12, you suffer no ill effects. However, it is very disconcerting to hear the map talk to you. Clearly, it, a troubled entity resides in it. I look around. Is it speaking only in my head, or does Lulu appear to have heard this as well? She's floating next to you. That's lovely. All we need now is more voices in our heads. What? I thought I just got rid of one. Huh? Um, this is an interesting map, Lulu. You shouldn't oh, look too hard at it. <laughs> and that's about all I have. She flies a little closer to you, and as she does, the voice stops instantly, like being cut off. Very similar to a conversation you had with Glazia at one point that was interrupted in a similar way. We don't say that name a lot, but I'm, I'm allowed to. I'm the DM. The she has no power over me, <laughs> right? All right. No power. <laughs> you have gum. All right. Back to Typhon. Um, if you want to, well, never mind. I guess. I was gonna see if you wanted to speed along at all, or if you want her okay. Um, no, I don't know if fine. To do that, but, but then. So, Barnabas. Yes. What was your specialty in life? It was a very long time ago. I don't care to think about it very much. But I suppose if I had to have a specialty, it would have been potion making. I see. Well, it is a shame to see a good ingredient or some such go to waste, I suppose. Do you have any use for these? I know it could be a particularly valuable reagent in the right circumstances. Um, He will hold up the eyes of the doppelganger. My goodness. Indeed. I could craft something very, very powerful from those, I think. What would you be your price? How about a share of the product? Two eyes, after all. Two eyes, two potions, two split between us. That is a fair deal. It will take me some time. I do not believe I will be able to have it completed between now and when you are due to leave. I'm sure the plan is to return. Very well. In that case, I will begin making them immediately. And if you continue to put in good words with Maggie, I'll be sure that any of these other things that I find along the wastes that could be particularly valuable find their way into your laboratory. I myself would love to experiment with them, but... Well, you in I don't market? have the time nor the setup. Are you in the market for such things? For 
for trinkets, what? items of value to those in our profession or your profession. My profession is now quite different from what it was in life. But I seem to recall needing to write many things down. Mm. Yes. Bit of a problem for me now. However, I have acquired something that has made it easier, but not necessarily useful. And he picks up the apparatus and reaches over and pulls this very large golden quill. Puts it on the table between the two of you. Do you know what this is? I do not, unless a voice tells me in a, just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, indeed. Well, it has gone by many names in the past, but it is commonly referred to as a quill of convenience. Do you write a lot of spells? You strike me as the type. You're not one of these that gets their power from some strange bargain with evil. No, I've had to earn every ounce of my own power myself. Good for you. Well, you will find that using a quill such as this will cut down the time it costs for you to write a spell in half. Indeed. Indeed. And you have no use for it? I have very little use for it. Occasionally it comes in handy, but I can find other means. You strike me as someone who'd be able to spend, or at least understand the value of an item such as this, and be willing to give me something that is probably more useful, at least to me. Which is? Well, for you to decide, what are you willing to pay me in exchange for this? Hmm. And you need not make your decision immediately if you are due to return. I think that is likely to be the case. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything. Um. Well, just be aware that it is here. Very well. Good I appreciate your faith. Or at least... That you for trusting me with this. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it costs me little. You are 100% in Mad Maggie's power while you are here. I trust that you will do nothing that will compromise your well-being. You strike me as an intelligent sport. Uh, another question. Mm. As a former wizard yourself, I find myself in a difficult situation on this plane. Creatures like yourself, many others, are not so easy to bend under the powerful forces of magic. Yes. Some of that is innate, some of it is cultivated. Is there any... Is there any power that overcomes this? Any... Interesting. Knowledge, usually. Most of, of the denizens you'll find here are immune to something, but none of them are immune to everything. Mm. Experience discovering what works with whom. Surviving. Yes, the longer you survive, the better you'll get at it. I appreciate the time, Barnabas. And to you, good day, Typhon. All right. And you leave. Samus and Persephone, while the rest have been on their merry jaunts, what have you wanted to do? For, for, for a 
mo a big chunk of this, Persephone kept her distance, but um, kind of warring with herself and probably obviously physically warring with herself of whether or not she wanted to come over to Islan, but finally she does. And she said, and she says, um, that's the first time I've ever held a soul coin. Referring back to when Maggie gave us all one. Mm -hmm. Some people find it easier to handle than others. It was awful. Is that what it feels like in Rim's soul coin? He is suffering, yes. Just kind of nods. And I suppose there's nothing we can do about that. If you have a suggestion that I haven't thought of, I'm certainly amenable to hearing what you have to say. No. You miss him terribly. Happen. Yes. But he's my friend and he's suffering every second that he's not here. I'm sorry for the pain you're feeling. I hope we can return him soon. She walks away. Eastland was, uh, she actually had Rim's journal in her hand and was uh, leafing through it. I don't know if you noticed that. Well, obviously you wouldn't have because I just said it just now. Um, but uh, did she, she made it a point to kind of brandish it intentionally. Um, as you oh. came to speak to her. Well, then she goes to leave, and then she's like, are you reading his diary? Mm-hmm. Any different from peeking around in someone's brain, Persephone? You know what? If you ever, if I ever, if you ever take over my body, I, I, everybody can read my diary, too. Or, wait, no. Dang it! That <laughs> <laughs> I just rolled a one with my You're stupid. <laughs> the opposite. You can read my brain then too. I <laughs> insult you. <laughs> You're nothing but a name caller. <laughs> Duty head. Oh, this is uh, somewhat sputtering and she's not quite sure what. Persephone steps away. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and the day progresses. Um, Jax, still invisible. Do you wish to look for your items? Yeah, we're looking the through the walls and whatever. I will allow. Uh, the um, red caps and mad caps are thick on the wall. It will be nigh impossible for anyone who is not invisible to make any kind of investigation. So, Jax, have at it. Day 20. Come on, with Jack's. 20. Let us see. Oh, Falcon, you could have guidanced me as well. Oh, I mean, I guidanced him. No, let's do that. Python, what hey. did you lose? Um, I just deleted it out of my equipment. It was a book and a vial of ink. You find a book and a vial of ink, Jax. Pretty sure they belong mm -hmm. to, to Typhon. Yeah. That okay. is all that you are going to be able to find while you are investigating Invisible. You are really having to duck, you know, really watching everybody as they are moving past because if they run into you, then the jig is probably up. So having to duck in and out of all of this, you're able to use your um, advantage with your goggles to scan very small parts here and there, but you find this one item, although you might have another chance at some other point. Okay. And you all begin to feel sleepy. What would you like to do? How would you like to rest? Typhon, I assume you're going to do the alarm spell again? Yeah, I will do that. Yeah. You go into the tent that you were in before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The 20 foot cube 
The tent is actually a little bigger than what you see here on the map. It doesn't quite cover the entire tent, but it will certainly cover the entrance and most of the, most of like more than half of it. Okay. So um, we can easily stay within that yes. range to, okay. right. Okay. Typhon, I found your coloring book. <laughs> and some ink. Thank you, Jax. 50 gold. Jax. Oh, I'm only joking. You do owe Falcon 50 gold, though. And I'll hand, <laughs> over, I'll right. hand over the book. He knows the drill, right, Falcon? Of course he does. He's, he is the legerman. All right. I have no so idea what that is. Sit mm -hmm. down around a campfire in the middle of this tent, more like a yurt. Um, you all have your packs, uh, your sleeping rolls laid out. And there's a fire, a small fire in the middle for cooking any food that you wish. Smoke escapes through a chimney of sorts in the top. What are you eating? I've still got a rat. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I didn't tell you this. Well, I probably did, but I used to be a hunter. Of what? Animals, humans, whatever it was. Well, um... Well, I'll, I'll take a rat for now, and do you think there's anything in a Avernus you could hunt, let alone uh, much less likely that we could eat? Well, we know there's rats. No, that's true. That's true. Plenty of rats. Who wants a rat, then? Take one. Mm. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> do any of you in your magics have abilities that could sustain us? This is going to be an issue moving forward, and I think we need to prepare for it. Well, if this is any additional incentive, I know Rim does. Sadly, I don't have access to that magic, but if we can find a new body for myself and can return him into his, I'm sure he'd be able to perform that feat. What about you, F Falcon? Can you create sustenance? Oh, see, so you're given the... Uh... Given the time, I can. Um, I've, I've got the ability to create water. Could also purify food and drink. So, anything we find, I could make edible. Well, I could make it so it won't kill us. But, uh, well, and good or bad, no matter what we find, as long as it isn't poisonous, it will taste just as bad as anything else. That's true. Mm. Would you like a rat, Silas? Oh, well, I don't think I'd like one, but I'm not going to turn it down at this point. Okay, I will cross off six rats. Yeah, is there a? I mean, is there? Can clerics create food and water? Uh, I actually do have at the third level the ability to create food and water. I can create forty-five pounds of food and thirty gallons of water on the ground or in containers within range. Enough to sustain up to 15 humanoids or five steeds for 24 hours. Oh, one goblin. It is bland but nourishing and spoils if uneaten after 24 hours. The water is clean and doesn't go bad. So that might be a... I hate to put a third level spell yeah, tax right? on you, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I've still yeah, got without, 19... Without Goodberry. I've still got 19 rations, so... Sure. Yeah, and it spoils within just a day. Is that what? You yeah, said? we have to eat it within twenty four hours, which is fine because you eat it, and I just burn the spell for the day. Then that's okay. Okay. I mean, it's fine. I don't even care. Forty five pounds <laughs> of rats. <laughs> Jeez, sounds amazing. All right, uh, are you setting a watch tonight? Yes. Who is on first? I'll do it. Persephone is on first. Very well. Who is on second watch? I believe what's on second? I'll do second. Silas is on second watch. Third watch. I'll, I'll take third. third watch. Okay. That was Fulcrum? Yeah. 
Alfred like or Jax? I say. Oh, you can both do it. Uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's say let's let's buddy up. What do you do that fist for? You're not going to punch my teeth out, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I put them back in. Well, all right. First watch. Persephone. Make a perception check. Oh, so close. Right. The fort is almost constantly a buzz. Movement is always happening. You hear voices calling. You also hear the sounds of explosions and wind and destruction from beyond the walls. Occasionally, the cry of some mournful creature, either alive or dead, or somewhere in between. However, as your companions sleep, you do not detect anything that is awry. Your watch ends. Silas, take a perception check. That would be a roll of a three. I do not see them coming to kill me. You hear something, Silas. It seems to be coming from the tent itself. I have a passive of 19. You are asleep, Jax. Oh, yeah, that amplifies it. 29. <laughs> there is a... Scratching. Sounds like something pawing at the outside of the tent. Just behind you. How sturdy is the tent? Is it like could it's I put, made could of I... some? It's made of a, a several different animals of, hi, of hide. Some of them, unfortunately, humanoid. But all together, they are quite thick. It would detect. It would take a a blow of a mighty weapon to cut through it, although it could be done. I have a mighty weapon, but Indeed, I'm not you going to cut the tent. Uh, I'm going to listen carefully to see if I can determine this noise. Is it, is it, you know, something small? Is it something large? Is it the wind? All right. With your roll of three, you find it difficult to determine, but there's something familiar about it. And you have it. It sounds like somebody moving their fingers on leather, a hand scratching it. And you think, hand, crawling hands. And just as you think that, you see coming through the opening in the roof, just a wave of crawling undead hands just <laughs> moving them, coming down the sides of the roof, going to the front, setting off the alarm spell, which immediately awakes everybody, filling the tent. You are surrounded by swarms of undead hands cut off at the wrists, some with claws, some humanoid, some obviously from beasts, all of them dripping flesh and skeletal. We will. Oh boy. Roll initiative as soon as I have you all on the board. <laughs> as uh, everyone has rolled their initiative, we have at the top of the order Silas. But before you go, why don't I reveal your enemies? Oh, they're big. Yeah. Through the hole of the large tent that you're in, the hands just crawled in like um, uh, like large beetles, just 
coming on. They're just swarming over each other, just hand over hand over hand, and they're grasping, they're clawing, and they're punching. Silas, you are first. Of course I am. I'm completely unprepared. The first thing I'm going to do... <laughs> Sorry. One thing is... before, could you put up Lulu's aura to help all it's of us not, who it's have not in, It's not invisible. It's not visible. It is not. It at the is moment. up. I will make it visible for you all. <laughs> So we don't now, do you accidentally nullify a spell on ourselves. So you can't Ooh. even successfully cast a spell in that. Correct. You can cast it if it. Yeah. If, 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 it, if, if, the, if the effect happens, happens outside. outside, you can cast it. Okay. Uh, I need to roll Lulu's initiative too. And then. And then DM, we discussed that uh, like channel divinities don't count as casting, or does that was it? We're going to go with cast spell specifically if the excellent if it costs if it says in the text that you cast a spell or you do a sp you, you you have a, an ability that allows you to cast a spell that is nullified while you are in as long as if it's like a ray or a beam or something that originates from you and then travels from you to a place can't do it. But like a protection spell or something of that nature that is a clerical. No, it's still casting a spell. Okay. It's not the, the, whether or not what it's about... divine or arcane doesn't matter. If if you cast protection on somebody outside of the sphere, then it works. But if you cast it on yourself or somebody inside the sphere, it does not work. Yeah. So what for about... instance, if I were to cast like mass healing word from inside the circle, on it would work if there was anybody outside the circle. Correct. But what about channeling divine energy? Uh, as long as it does not say cast yeah, so... a spell. Okay. Does it take Lulu an action to turn it off? No, she can turn it off. Let me double check that actually. I think now that you mention it, it might tell you. It definitely costs her um, concentration. Oops. Oh, damn check. it. <laughs> what did you do? Did you write a line? I accidentally clicked a, a spell and I crit on the attack. Aww. Aww. <laughs> That's so unfair. Aww. Let's see Sean, here. Sean has no sadness in his voice. No, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not sorry at all. Sean's like, oh, uh, crit see. happens. I'm sorry. Let's see here. Uh, come on now. Um, there it is. Should we see if this problem can be manicured? No. Jeez. That, is that no, I didn't nail we'll that one. Just later. lost twelve okay. dollars. <laughs> we'll, 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 oh, no. we'll figure it out later. It's okay. What do you? What do you? Uh, what do you want to do, Silas? I'm actually just going to attack. Just, All right. Ah. So first thing I'm going to use half my movement to stand up. Okay. And uh, just observing where we are at, I'm going to use some more of my movement, five, ten, to right there. Okay. And then attack. Uh, is this a horde or an individual? This is a swarm. Swarm. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to Elven Glaive attack mm -hmm. for an 18 to hit. An 18 is a hit. Okay. This is on mm. green? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. And let me... Yeah. And that's not a lot of damage. But let's fix that with some kind of smite. We'll okay. go divine. Divine smite. Wonderful. Uh, for a total of 17 damage 17 damage green swarm and just Got as it. a reminder the hit points are not accurate on the screen yeah uh, that's to everybody that's it got it so this was let me see here all right very good nothing else silas uh no that's it Okay, that will bring us to Eastland. Uh, I need to spend a turn manifesting my weapon because I would not be sleeping with it in hand. Indeed you so, do. So take your half movement to... Um, stand. Stand. 
Summoning the weapon does not is not affected by the aura, but I think you are out of it anyway. So, uh, yes, uh, that's good to know, though. Uh, so instead of my short bow, I will uh, manifest my Hellfire short sword in well. here, and that is unfortunately the end of my turn. All right, the crawling claws go. The one that is attacking, the one that was attacked by Silas, attacks him. I actually think it's Jack's next. He hasn't been sorted properly. Oh, yet. has not been sorted. He came in late. You are quite right. Jax is before Eastland, so we'll have, well, yeah. We'll have that happen on the next turn, but now it is your turn, Jax. Jax? We got no sound. You're muted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. My voice meters, uh, voice thing's messing around. Okay. Um, yeah, I will move there and stabby stabby. Uh, uh, uh. 25 to hit. 25 is a hit. For 23 damage. Very good. Oh, did we get to see the map? Sorry, guys. I'm trying to fix my blooming mic. Anything else from you, <laughs> Jax? Um, I will disengage to there. All right. So that is Silas Jacks and Islin who have gone. Now it is the Crawling Claws' turn. They turn to attack you, Silas. Let's see here. Got to get a handle on this. Right, so with the first attack, they attempt to grapple. So I will need an opposed athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. Everyone remain palm. Oh my god! That is a 25. Very good, and I get to go at advantage. If you're going to help him roll like that, then just keep him coming. (laughs) Yeah. It's all right. That beats them. Up. They they all try and swarm, and you feel them trying to hold your arms close to you. They're trying to grapple you. However, you were able to ah, bust out of them. They are not able to grapple you, but then they take their other two attacks. And they just claw and smash into you as hard as they can. AC 13. Miss. AC 20. Hit. Doing ooh, maximum damage, 19 points of piercing damage. Now, the other two move towards Falkron. Because of the palm down, wasn't it? That's right. Damn right, that's because of that. They attempt <laughs> to um, they attempt to grapple you as well. You may use athletics or acrobatics to avoid them. Your choice. Oh, well, they're not a window, so I might have a chance. All right, uh, I'll do an athletics roll. God save me. Uh, 19. A 19 is also what they rolled, which means you have succeeded. I oh, in, a con- in a contested thing, the defender always succeeds. However, the other one rolled a 21, so you need to roll against them as well. Oh, oh, I get to roll. Oh, I get to roll mm-hmm. again. Ha, yep. ha, ha, ha. Separate All one. Right, then. Mm, blessed Omater, guide my hand. Nine. Unfortunately, <laughs> that is not successful. And they, <laughs> gripping you, they are now all over you. They are holding you down. Mm. You will not be able to use your movement to stand while you are grappled by these creatures. What? Now, they, you know, oh. your movement is zero. You are grappled. Now they will, all of them take their other attacks upon you, which I imagine will be at at advantage. Indeed, AC seventeen is a miss. AC twenty three for a crit. Well, Holy of AC, course, AC if, five and AC twenty. <laughs> so I've got a. Why is it every time I'm prone, DM? You <laughs> always crit me. It's it's fantastic. All right. I think it's great. So <laughs> the 17, I believe you said, was a miss? Uh, yeah, 17 was a miss. Right, so but, was however, the... the crit is not, and it is brutal. It is 26 points of piercing damage as they manage to worm their way 
underneath your armor, uh. digging the claws deep into your flesh. <laughs> and the other 20 only is 11 points of piercing damage. All right. So that was 11 points of piercing and then 23 points Correct. Of 23. Ah, oh, man. I don't like this. I just can't put my finger on it, but I don't like it. <sighs> oh, and then another one manifests. <laughs> <right over here. laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually saying they went after Falkern because of the holy symbol. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Not because she was caught red-handed. Ah. Oh, and there is one more. This one more will turn to Islin, and it will attempt to grapple you. Athletics or acrobatics, your choice. Uh, big whopping eleven. 11 is not enough. You are grappled. You, however, are standing. So they're immediately holding you in place, keeping you from moving. Um, let's see here. Right. No other special things. You just can't move. They take their two other attacks on you. Uh, I'm hitting AC 17. That's me to beat. AC 16. Miss. All right. So we've got a one hit coming towards you that is going to be a total of 14 points of piercing damage. Okay. Do you have an uncanny dodge? Not yet? Okay. That will be the end of the claw's turn, which will bring us to Falkron. All right, DM. So, uh, having been grappled and now prone, I can't. You said I couldn't stand back up because I'm currently being held down. You, yeah, your movement is zero, so you do not have half of your movement to use to stand up. However, right. you can take your action to get out of the grapple and then use all. If you are successful, you're able to use all of your movement to stand up and do whatever you want. Excellent. Okay, so uh, I, I, I guess I'd like to do that. All right. So make an opposed. Um, check to see if you can get it. again acrobatics or athletics, your choice. All right, athletics. Oh, dear God, another nine. They oh. are still holding you down. Mm. So, that was your action. You have a bonus action. I certainly do. Uh, I can I, I would like to summon Steve to aid me. Uh, mm. are you going to allow Very that? Very good. It's a bonus action to do it, um, is, a, it is a bonus action to, to, to yeah, summon. Um, the components of the spell are? Verbal and somatic. Verbal and somatic. So you do need your hands in order to do it. Um, make a make a strength saving throw to see whether or not, because you're not being restrained, however, right. you are covered with these Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, it's strength saving throw or dexterity saving throw. You're either going to muscle through to your holy symbol or you're going to um, dodge out of it. Well, I'm a dwarf, so I'm going to muscle through. All right, right. strength so. saving throw. Strength saving throw. I'm so oh, sorry. <laughs> you are unable to reach your holy symbol. Yeah. With oh, an eight. Blessed ill mother. Hey, that means you didn't lose the spell slot. Yeah, it's yeah, true. You did yeah. not. You were not able to cast the spell. All right. Uh, so, anything else, Falcon? Uh, no. I'm just gonna. I guess I'm just sitting here on my hands. So. All right. Very good. That will bring us to Typhon. Um. So, just a question. Do we? Is it? Here that we you can't use a somatic component while you are restrained um it in order because she had to reach her uh uh holy symbol and there's so many of these things on her and she's a little literally like prone on the ground i had the role come up like that yes okay i think it makes sense in this circumstance okay, i got you well i was gonna say isn't doesn't she only need a hand because she doesn't need her holy symbol because there's no material component Oh, that's a good point. If it's just her hand, if you just need to like snap and use a verbal thing, yeah, she needs. Yeah, to just there's do, no material component. Do this or whatever. Right. Like, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good catch, uh, Typhon. That's perfectly. That's perfectly true. Uh, you do just not need the to touch her. Blood her. drained from my head when I heard about like you know, <laughs> grappling, removing somatic components. And yeah, go, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, what? No. Yes. Uh, that's a very good point. Um, you do not need your holy symbol. You don't need a material component to cast it. So you are um, you're good. You can cast spiritual weapon, and Steve can join the field. Come on, Steve! Ladies and gentlemen, uh, with a fifteen to hit, that is I, a hit. I summon the Steve. Which one are you hitting? Uh, blue or red? Uh, 
which one is i believe red is currently restraining me or am it i is, wrong on, red right, is yeah. constraining yeah so yeah whichever is the all right so you have it appear behind it and it takes its attack a 15 is a success fantastic let's go ahead and roll that beautiful damage uh all right go steve go go steve go 11 force 11. damage 11 very good couple of the hands are smashed under Steve's spiritual might. Anything else? No, no, now that I've been able to actually do something, I feel a little better about my lot in life. (laughs) It's not a lot, but it's a life. Um, Very good. That will now bring us to Typhon. Got it. So one is completely off on top of Falkron and crazy bludgeoning. Yes, indeed. It has moved into her space and has completely engulfed her. All right. I would like that one to fail a charisma save versus banishment, please, and thank you. <laughs> Very good. Let's see here. Charisma save. Well, it's pretty low, <laughs> as you might imagine. Clearly not hand models. All right. All right. I have rolled a negative two. <laughs> it's so... All of a sudden, that one just disappears. Typhon, you so are concentrating. So Falkrin just lost a finger? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it is... Falkrin, you You just sort of sit up, and they're completely gone. Um, Typhon, you are concentrating on banishment. Mm-hmm. And um, I will reach out a hand to help her up. Very good. May I use... Um, the rest of my, uh, I guess I'd use my action or half of my movement to stand up. Is there any way I can do that with the rest of my turn? If yeah, not, it takes half fine. of your action. Um, are you adjacent to her square? I believe so. She's uh, in like four squares. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So, so we'll, we'll say yes. four square. We'll say that you are adjacent to her square. So you use half of your movement to stand up and half of the other half of your movement to help her up. All That's right. Totally fine. I'm good with that. And um, I will look at her and say, don't make me regret not casting mage armor. Mm. End my turn. We'll have to knuckle down. Oh my god. <sighs> You're gonna get a knuckle in a minute. <laughs> I can see that coming. <laughs> Give him the finger, Sean. Yeah. Almost simultaneously, two large weapons <laughs> rip into the sides of the tent make huge tears and stepping in are these strange insect-like creatures that you've seen both in the cemetery of El Terrell and also driving some of the um, machines that Fionor has uh, outside. These, these large eyed, bug eyed um, mach- um, creatures that have long serrated uh, um, trident like weapons. They step in each of them one coming here and one coming here let me see here so just next to Typhon and just next to Persephone hmm. indeed um, I'm going to give this one a little red dot I got the feeling that Necromancer dot. is a little pissed off at us anybody else get that feeling yeah. I get that feeling can I use my reaction you may. Um, I move 5, 10, 15, 20 to there. Thanks, buddy. All right. <laughs> there, uh, there, um... There's a plan behind this madness. <laughs> Their um, attack was to enter in, so that is all that they do. That will bring us to Persephone. All right, I'm going to do the mobile flourish. Uh-huh. Or, or, sorry, wait. The, hold on. Oh. Uh, oh. So I meant flashing. Uh, but I'm also I'm only going to get one extra point, but whatever, I'm doing it. Um, so Oof. let me see if I... This with a roll of a one. That's just the extra damage I get. Um, come on. Come on, Hector. Uh, 12 to hit the um, the hands. Okay. Uh, that is not a hit, unfortunately. All right. Uh, then I'm going to just 
do it again, but I can't use the flourish this time. You, flourish, you don't you. have to use the flourish before you attack. Yeah. So, because you don't have to waste it on something that doesn't hit, you can roll it when you... Oh, yeah, awesome. It's like it's like uh, the smite thing for um, paladins. If you hit, then you use a smite, yeah. but you don't have to. Great. Then the... the... So Slashing. hold on. So go ahead and hold on to that that uh, bardic inspiration slot. Then can I try it again now? When yes. I... Great. If you hit. Yep. Let's see. That'll do it. I would. That will oh. definitely. <laughs> it. My goodness. Uh, so twelve plus that mighty one. I yes. Rolled earlier. So thirteen total. This guy also gets the one damage to him as well. Okay. <laughs> I pretty much just like whacked him with my elbow a little bit so okay. that's fine that's cool though you gave him a buggy blood nose buggy yeah blood nose. and then my bonus action i'll use my handy dagger for an extra five on the hands all right yeah those hands fall apart into desperate pieces they are no more and that's me all right well done Lulu, she turns and she blasts out with her trunk hitting this one and this one. Persephone! And let's see here. All right, well, the hands definitely failed their saving throw. And however, Sean, if those hands are the ones that are on me, they would be outside of the circle. Oh, wait. Um, no, there are the orange ones stars. here. And it doesn't seem that her attack has uh, is affected by her aura. It's not a spell. Nope, it is a breath weapon. So, okay. She's got holy breath. Indeed she does. I'll breathe on you! <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Terrible thing, that whore breasts. <laughs> you just <laughs> die. <laughs> Why won't you die? Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. That is uh, Lulu's turn. Silas, back to the top do of the I order. Take damage, uh, do I take damage from Lulu's uh, breath weapon? She did not aim it at you. Yeah. Those she hands was able are on to... me. I'm being grappled by them. You're being grappled by them. So they're actually yeah. in your space, which they means are. they would be they would have been out if of that, the range move, of everything. If that moved, I have, I have an attack of opportunity then. Which is why I moved there. I see. Okay, we'll take okay. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning. All right. Okay, so take your attack of opportunity, Jax. While you do that, I will return the hit points. This one lost from Lulu's attack. Oh, would have been a 14 at the time because I was flanking. 14 at the time is the AC. Right. Mm, 22 damage. 22 damage. It is dead. Told you, Samus. I had a plan. I appreciate it. I, I, why I never doubt you again. <laughs> oh, did that thing take other damage? Yes, it had taken yeah. other damage. I sneak attacked it on my guy. Remember. Yep. Oh, that's right. Um, zero. But the other one stands, so. Now, we are back to Silas. Okay, I'm going to step over the claws, 5, 10 to right there. Then using my reach, I'm going to first attack with the glaive uh, against the chittering monster. Whatever that thing might be. 23 to hit. 23 is a hit. And that is 13 Ooh, damage. 13 damage. And let's just add something on to that, shall we? Um, I'll just go with another Divine Smite, actually. Okay. Um, and because I forgot to add it earlier, but it's if this is an undead or a fiend, mm -hmm. you could let me know. It appears to be suffering the same way that an, a fiend would. Or an undead. Or a... Right. Something. 
I'm trying to determine because I get an extra damage if it's an undead or fiend. It, yes, you do. Okay, groovy. So that would be 23, uh, 24, 30 points. Mm. Wow. Of mm. Shining, radiant, Vandria infused paladin smitiness. With a mighty, mighty blow coming over the head of uh, Persephone, down comes the glaive of uh, Silas as this creature just <laughs> leaving a massive, massive wound in it as uh, its Icarus blood just pours onto the ground here. Uh, that will bring us to Jax. It flew too close mm. to the paladin. Mm. Um, being small, can I get to there? Thanks. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, cool. you can. Cool. Run up the wall. I will stab the one that's just taken that for an 18. Hmm? For 23 damage. 23 damage. It falls dead. It's <laughs> barely moving. My kill. And then I will move over. So Your kill. Sure it was, 10, Jack. 15, 20. Uh, 25. I'll stay there. All right. Eastland. Eastland will step forward. And... Eastland needs to stand up first. Oh, Eastland will stand up. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and she will step forward and uh, thrust her sword into the insect creature. Very good. Ooh. Ah, 12. 12 is not a hit. And that is the end of my turn. All right. The crawling crawl claws go again. The one that is still in here, the other one is uh, elsewhere. Um, attacks Falgren again. Attempts to grapple. I will need an opposed athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. All right. By all the gods, I shall try to oppose. And with a 17? Uh, well, let's see. They missed their first one. They have advantage. Oh, just a 16. So, they no good. Hmm? Or never mind. They have advantage, yes. On grapple checks. Ooh, um because they're handsy. They're gonna try again. They have advantage. So uh make another opposed strength uh opposed uh athletics check. Mm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh that, that beats them. Their last is attack. <laughs> they the last thing they do is just attack you, hitting AC 18. Oh damn, that's me to beat. Okay. All right, so that is 19 points of piercing. God, these guys suck. All right. Appearing behind you is oh, great. <laughs> sort, of, sort of coming out of the roof in a sort of a, an amorphous um, cloud of smoke, and then you see it sort of spread out and then crawl along the inside of the um, of the uh, uh, tent in much the same fashion as the claws did. You see this. What? Seven hells? I guess I, I really shouldn't have pissed off those red caps, huh? All right. And this is comes... someone else's forces. Oh, yeah. No, we are most definitely you, being. You, you think? No. It attacks you. Attacks with me? A, yes, with another crit. I have to take a picture of this because hells? you're hells? Never going to accuse Sean? me of cheating. <laughs> I have to take a picture. I <laughs> bet it gets. I bet it gets sneak attack and poison damage. Huh? He's all like, "Let me. Where's the 20? Okay, okay oh, there's the twenty. Bad. Now let me take a picture and right. make sure my hand is in the picture." You take. <sighs> a lot of damage. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You take. Um, 13 points of piercing damage. Oh, well, that's... 17 points of necrotic damage as this shadowy blade plunges into your chest and you feel your blood go cold. Okay, so we're up to 30 right now. Yeah? 30. That's good. Also. Okay. 
you t- your strength is drained. Oh, come on. All right. But how much? By four. By four? Oh, yes. God. As in like four off of my total. Off as, of or... your total strength. All if right. your strength falls to zero, Falkron, you will die. Oh, well. Um, don't you worry about that because I was unconscious 24 points of damage ago. So uh, that was... Uh, uh, okay, so was it the last attack that put you unconscious? Oh, yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Yeah. No, you're not going to... This D- creature DM, has... DM already like, you triple fail. <laughs> yeah, right? This creature has another attack. Oh, good God. It heaven. uses its attack to pull <laughs> Quietus away from you. What? Its hands burn as it does. And then it begins to leave. You may have an attack of opportunity. Typhon. It's not That's even on the board. Space. I don't have a weapon. It's not. Oh, I'm sorry. It's um, it's on the GM's level. You don't have a weapon prepared. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was a precursor that it was getting away no matter what. No, it's not getting away no matter what. It has dropped Falcron. It has used its other attack to take his weapon, which has caused it damage. Her and weapon. it is leaving. Um, and because it is actually going to in order to do that, it has to come into Falkrin's space to take the weapon. Uh, as it leaves, um, Falkrin, you are able to take an attack of opportunity, but you say you don't have a weapon equipped? Uh, I, I do not. Typhon. Typhon. Typhon does not have a weapon equipped? Okay. Then it runs out of It's still the... got movement as well. Oh, good point. Thank you. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has five feet of movement left. Good call. Well caught. So it moves to... So Falkrun... Okay. Falkrun was there. Yeah. It moved on top of her. Moved off of her. So it is there. Still in... Well, wait. You keep... Uh-huh. You keep... keep moving you. Sorry. It's here. You, know, you move... Yeah. yeah, you move where you okay. want to go. And so I'll that's where she... There that's where she is, and that's where you are. Okay. We are all copacet now. All oh, right, are so... we? Are we copacetic? Yes, we are indeed. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Coma septic is what he meant to say. (laughs) Indeed. So that will bring us to Falkrin. Falkrin, roll a death save. Roll a death save. Yeah, no, that's a... What else do I do on Mondays but roll death saves? All right. Oh, swell. Okay. What did you roll? No, hang hang on a sec. I got to update all this horrendous damage that I'm up to. All right, so... um, I just got to roll the d20, yeah? That's yep, the, uh... just a d20. There's a just... feature for it on D&D Beyond. I do believe that the spiritual weapon stays up even though you're unconscious. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. It just watches you. A Steve, nine. with concern. Jesus, all right. I'm afraid you take a step closer to death. It's time, um, it's, um Falkrin. Oh, I'm all right. one third there. So that will uh, bring us to Typhon. Gotcha. So let's see. I'm looking at the tracker. That's on 13. The claws went on 13. Okay. Just trying to figure out what's going on. Were we on Falkrin's turn? Yeah, Falkrin rolled it. Yeah, making sure. Because the yeah, I'll I'll put you on the look at the turn tracker. Looking right here. Say, do it. Do I get to have my companion yep. hammer do something, or does that not? Have it that only you have, so, to, yeah. you have to. You have to um, <laughs> be you have conscious. To, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to direct it. Yeah, yeah. Avenge me. <laughs> um, I will. Um, let's see. Look around and ugh, things surrounding me. Don't like it. Will um, utter some words and cast. Misty Step. Okay. To appear here, and I will look over at um, Silas and Persephone, and I will say, "It is stealing the sword. End that thing." And I will then, well, hopefully, this plan works. Cast, uh, use the Ring of the Scorpion. Mm-hmm. Uh, please, yes. Okay, twenty-six. Ah, twenty-six is a hit. For five points of magical piercing, and I will pull it ten feet closer to me. Very good. Ooh, does that go into Lulu's area of effect? It does indeed. And the fire. 
Yes, the fire is mostly come on come embers on. by now. But you want to, do you want to specifically pull it into the fire, Typhon? Let's as long as it's closer to us, let's cook it a little bit. All right, but. so roll a d4. Okay. <laughs> Three. So that was a total of eight damage done. Yes. Very good. It was. Thank you. All right. The fire did not seem to affect it as much as you would have thought. Wah. Indeed. <laughs> Wah. <laughs> All right. Oh, can I deal? Uh, I, I keep forgetting. I will use my. Uh, power surge feature to deal an extra three points of force damage. Alrighty. Alright, that appeared to do full damage. Cool. Okay. Now we have the Mesoloth. The Mesoloth... Strange, clickety clackety creature. Looks around <laughs> and says something in Infernal to the uh, shadowy creature. Who speaks Infernal? I do. Give me what the mistress wants. I will take it. It disengages, stepping around Eastland, reaches out its hand, takes the sword from the uh, shadowy creature. As he does, it burns its hands. It then looks at you all around and attempts to do something, but is ineffective. I was going to say, I bet you've got about six people here who say, no, you don't. Persephone, it is your turn. Can it disengage and use that Action on the same turn? Interact with option. Interact, interact oh. with object, yeah. But it um, disengaged. That's what I was thinking. Good point. Let's see here. Yeah, give him the ability back, Typhon. <laughs> okay. Um, um right, regardless of whether or not I could use it, okay. it was not oh, able sorry. to, so we'll just I'll look that up while Persephone is doing her thing. All right. Um would it be a full uh a full action to take try and take the sword away? You can only take it away if it's willing or if it's at its feet. There is okay. no attack. There are specific attacks that you can make depending on classes and abilities for disarming. Okay. Um, unless you have that attack, you cannot disarm it. Okay. Then I'm just going to attack. Is it is it wielding ah! the sword? Hmm? Dis disarm is specifically meant against an attacker holding a weapon as She cannot a disarm it with any attack that she has. Okay. Uh, does a 12 hit? A 12 does not hit, I'm afraid. Right. Um, again? I will say that if you are able to grapple Oof. it, oh. and um, somebody else is then, so if you grapple, then it's, it's man, but you don't have anything that can restrain it. So in order for you to be able to take it from it, it would have to be at least be restrained. Okay. I don't think anybody uh, here has anything that can be used to restrain it. You can use your attack to grapple it, but not restrain it. it would be pinned to the ground, at least, if I grapple right. it. Um, so is it too late? To, that's what I would have done. I'm just trying right. to... Okay, yeah, we'll go back if you want to do... Um, uh, so it's an athletics check. I have no problem going back. But yes, the disarm attack is something that specific classes get, and I can't just give oh. it away because it oh. lessens those other classes. Just got an 11. Okay. It has succeeded in throwing off your grapple. All right, and then I'll just use my bonus action to... One moment. Healing word for Falcron. Five points. So Okay. I know your seven. your first one was seven. Seven. Yeah, right. healing oh, word. Seven. So, Falkron, okay. you're up to seven. I leave. Yes. 
that's an interesting point, Silas. I, yeah, I still say that it is within its control. You already shut it down. I was just communicating. Well, it, it's it is a fair point, but yeah, to remove an item from its grip, it has to. Yeah, it, it's a, it counts as an attack. So it can't dual wield. It can't wield both its trident and the sword. But it does definitely have a hold of it. So it. that will bring us to Lulu. Lulu. I'm gonna call out before my turn ends, uh, just with the last moment of like, get the sword or something. Just okay. yelling out to everybody. Well, uh, Lulu was going to do her breath weapon. Well, I mean, so, do that, do that, do that. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> hurt right. them, hurt them, save me, save me. It wasn't uh, dragon, just more the tent. <laughs> okay. So it looks to me like she can get. She gets. She also okay. This will definitely hit you, uh, Eastland. Couldn't but she a, do a straight line over and then arc it up. Ooh. Let me see. You know let, what me I mean? the yeah, let me get the template out there. Uh, copy and it's a cone, like a like it's a burning a hands cone. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a cone. Like yeah, you're right. I'm drawing the cone. It's right there. <laughs> well, I just it it's a Ooh. it's a that's a much larger than it actually is. Uh, just a second it's, here. It's perfect. Exactly <laughs> like that. There it is. E it's let's see it's. It's like that. There we go. Yep, that'll do it. Good job, Lulu. Come on, blow so she Gabriel. Blows. blows it. All right. I've got some saves to make. Only crawling hands. It's a fail. And the. Bring it down. Bring it down. Other thing, the Shadow Assassin succeeds. The Mizzleloth. Is there, right? Yeah. Fails. Ooh. So, okay. With a blast and a trumpet of sparkly energy from her trunk, out comes the blast that you know so well as it sprinkles all over these creatures comes out and it does a lot of damage to the crawls, the crawls, the claws. Crawling claws. The crawling claws. Now let's let's be a performer now. Is what is the sound that we hear? Oh yes. <laughs> uh well I've had such bad luck being able to make the performing doing make the performing thing work. So I had to do this. Good. Yeah. So that is I the like sound the sprinkles that here is. Yes. Okay. So all the damage has been done. Um, and the other ones are still banished away. That is Lulu finished. That brings us to Silas. Okay. So the blast that Lulu just made appeared to hurt something. Indeed. Um, it hurt everything actually quite a bit. All right. I'm going to step in. Uh, one, two. That's 510. Is Lulu flying or is she small? I can move through her space. Yeah, both. 15, 20. Hop over. Uh, and 25 right there. I've okay. entered into spaces, but I've not exited any. Correct. And I am prepared with some bonus goodnesses, but I'm first going to make an attack roll. Okay. And see what that is. On that is a, attacking which? Uh, the strange chittering creature holding the sword. The right. demon beetle thing. 16 uh, skitters off of its armor. But I was going to apply some things, I said. I was hoping okay. I could say that. So, what's that? Flanking. Oh, good point. So that's actually a 17 with flanking. Uh, and I'm going to be very precise. Aha! Well, that certainly changes things. That is definitely a hit. That's what I'm hoping for. And that is that, but I'm going to use my last slot 
nobody knows that, but they sure do see me doing a bunch of stuff and I can't have many of those left <laughs> to, <laughs> to use that divine smite. Uh, yes. Except that D and D beyond just crashed. <laughs> oh, quite. No. Hold on. <laughs> Too much radiant damage. God damage. It can't handle. <laughs> it can't handle my truth. I'm serious. It's uh, it actually gave me an error report that the API has crashed and now it's doing oh. a spinning thing. So well, okay. I'm, so I see the damage that you've rolled so far. What were you going to do in a, or the smite? Uh, just um, going to do a divine smite, which is going to be two uh, d eight plus another d eight. So three d eight. I'm do it for I'm you? back on my listing. I'm loading my character sheet. I can't load my care. Oh no, I can. All right. Okay. It crashed for everybody. For a second, it crashed wow. for me too. Yeah. Okay, but Which I am still up. back on. Just need to find my smite. Uh, so many special abilities. Okay, so there's a 2d8 and then a 1d8. Well, it's the right time for smite wow. time. Oh. So, what? A 9, 17, 20, all radiant, all happiness, goodness. <laughs> Um, that is all on the Mazel Loth, I think. Did you not it. like that one um, bit. Uh, and what is your. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I'm going to uh, action search. Okay. Uh, just because somebody said not to let it go. So I'm not going to let it go. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to. Again, I'm going to be striking with precision as needed. Um, okay. Which seventeen? I'm guessing that seventeen 19. does not hit. Yeah. But okay, eighteen. Was, eighteen. Flank. Eighteen with flank. Yeah, so that does actually hit. So save your point. You don't oh, need okay. it. Okay. Okay. Uh, doing. God, yeah. I still have nine more it. points of damage, Good and that is all magic. Uh, but I can't apply any more smites. No more smiggity smiggities. Uh, but the falcon is up, right? Mm hmm. Yep, I'm standing. Barely. And, uh, <laughs> the same could also be said for this creature. <laughs> and Tess, uh, and, I'm sorry, Persephone and Islin are both also there. Mm -hmm. um, Islin is holding a something another, a, a glowing short ugly sword. weapon. Short sword. Yep. Okay. Uh, then I am going to do another special maneuver and i'm going to oh uh, yeah which is a bonus action mm -hmm. uh and when i take an attack action on my turn which i did uh actually i would have to forego so i can't do that i apologize so let me back off of that and then say i'm done okay so did you not you did not do no, the commander did strike not do did not do the commander strike okay very impressive still very good turn, but that's Silas. Jax. Hopefully, going Jax to hell, is well set up. If you're going to hell, make sure you take a paladin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. And yes, my smite was so powerful it knocked out D and D Beyond. Oh yeah. yeah. Shout out to ZC in the chat. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, that is it for Silas. That will bring us to Jax. Uh, the these part this pile of bony hands and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Can I crouch down and hide? Uh, yeah, it's a large pile. That's it's a mound of just broken hands and stuff like that. By all means, uh, hide. Thirty twenty. Um, who are you attacking? Uh, I'm going to be attacking this one here. Okay, let me take his passive. I believe a twenty is going to beat it, but let me double check. Yes, you are good. And I will move, spring forward, and attack him. Da -da -da. Let me just check something, if you don't mind. I've done it with disadvantage, but 20 to hit. 21 to hit. Right. So, it has blind sight. So the question is, does blind sight defeat stealth? That is the question. I don't think it does, actually. 
No, because being stealthy actually is more than just being unseen. Mm -hmm. The the sound of movements, right? everything else. And uh, the general consensus is that uh, stealth versus blind sight, tremor sense, that sort of thing. Also, is blind sight a magical ability? No, it's not a magic. No, no, it's, it's not a magic. Okay. So right. the blind, it's blind sight does not help it versus stealth. So that is a hit with the twenty for twenty-five damage. Twenty-five damage. It dies under the blades of Silas and Jax, just like the other one. My goodness, um, both of these mesoloths crumple to the ground in a pile of festering ichor, and as it falls, the sword. Falls by its side. Um, that will bring us to Islet. Uh, I can use a free action to pick it up. Yes. Yes. Interact with option. Uh, it is right at your feet. You can definitely pick it up. Is a. Uh, are those hands still alive to the uh, right of me? They are. They. Um, we, they did get their attack. They attempted to grapple twice and then punch. Um, that was what happened. That's what they did last turn. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm surprised they survived Lulu's blast. Um, they okay. had not taken any damage. Ah, I see. Um, uh, tossing the sword to Falkrin would be a bonus action, perhaps. What's your What would your ruling be on that? Uh, Falkrin could go down pretty easily too. She's got that's like true. Six I'll just points. hold on to it then. Uh, uh, I, I'm just, gonna. I would have to say right. that's an attack. That, or that not an attack, it's an action. It's, it's an action. Time. Okay, well then I will hold on to it and uh, I will... Um, uh, I'll take a strike with my sword against the hands since I'm here and there. Okay. Uh, it's 14. Not All right. very well. I'm afraid of 14. Ah, no, a 14 is the AC. You have, oh, yay. You have succeeded. All right, lovely. Uh, that would be 16. 16 is enough, and as your blade cuts through it, enough of them are killed that the rest sort of sort of wander around aimlessly and just sort of crawl a few inches away from the mass and then fall completely inert. Excellent. Very uh, good. Done. Done. What does the Shadow Assassin do? Can you move? Can you best... Get the hell out of dodge yeah, if he he's, knows what's he's good watching, for him. <laughs> he's watching everybody fall. Can you just move a little bit towards the back wall? If it's if it wants a sword, it's going to come for you, isn't it? Let it. Nah, it's done. Yeah, it disengages, and as it does, it becomes somewhat more amorphous. You can't see it as well as you could, and it runs out of the tent and out of sight. However, amorphous? it was running. It was running. That, that, that lots of attacks of opportunity, perhaps. No, no it, it, it took the disengage action. Oh, it did. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that is it. Out. The crawling claws are either gone or banished. Which brings us to Falkron. Give me my sword, please. Can you defend it in that state? Just give me a minute. <laughs> Spits a gob of blood. <laughs> I've been doing that a lot in these games. Um. Uh... <laughs> You put yourself in harm's way quite a bit, Falkron. Well, I want to say it's it's all part of the gig. Uh, gonna go ahead and cast Cure Wounds on myself. Very good. At third level, giving me so that's what. Oh, not a great roll. Not a great roll. Yeah, not, not soup's great. Uh, nineteen life back. So mm-hmm. I don't. You are healed for nineteen. Oh, give me, oh, give me something to do, and then. Uh, so you said it ran out the tent. Yes. Um, am I able, Sean, to like step forward and can I get my sword from Eastlin? Um, sure. Yeah, you uh, step forward, interact with object, get your sword for free. Not oh, actually, problem. you know what? You know what? I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to draw my warhammer plus one. 
and then I'm gonna she's gonna turn and head towards the uh, the opening. So the, the entrance tent. is this area right here. So as soon as you clear that, you will be able to see out. Okay. It's like so she draws it's her not hammer. Like it's a, yeah. She draws her hammer and goes, "Come on, Steve." And then she heads for the flap of the tent. Five, so Steve 10, comes with you. 15, 20. Coming right yeah. around the corner, and you see this creature that is only able to just get outside of the tent. Can she see it now? Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Were you able to actually step out of the tent with your movement? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so can you five, go ten, one more square? 5, 10, 15, Wait, yeah, so I'm here. So I was here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah. Right. Um, and it would actually not be there. It would be here. Yeah. Because it had to go out and do the same thing. So. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. There you are. Go for it. All right. Oh, man. I was like, why the hell is my uh, hit so low? And I was just like, oh, I've been. Poisoned. Your strength is down, right? Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Sean, was I poisoned? No, you weren't poisoned. Okay, you were life sucked. Yeah, oh. you, she took four <laughs> well, yeah, that's twenty. Away. That's twenty twenty, Scott. <laughs> but it wasn't right. even an albino shadow. Rolled a hit. That did it. Ah, uh, thirteen probably won't hit this guy. Thirteen. Well. You've done cure wounds, haven't you? Oh, I did. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely did. What I meant was, uh, Steve is going to go ahead and try to do that hit. Okay. All so right. it's a thirteen. Oh, right. You can't take the attack because you did cure wounds. Yeah, that's right. All right. So Steve swings. And Steve uh, does 12, which is 12, not... 12, I'm afraid, yeah. does not hit the Shadow Assassin's AC. Damn it. All right. Is that you done? Uh, no, yeah, I'm going to shout out. And he's just like, he's out here. So. Very well. We'll bring us to Typhon. So is there no way to see through the flaps of the tent or whatever? Well, the getting the Mesoloths ripped their way yeah. in. Yeah, where the the, there, so there's an opening they ripped over here, here and yeah. an opening here. So what? you can definitely use their openings to get out if you wish. Right, but I Puts can't see through side, here. Yeah. No, no, you can. You would have to be completely out of the tent to. But you can see Falkron. Uh, let me just make a little um, thing to aid you all. Oh yeah, when uh, so when I drew the Warhammer plus one, it's got light cast on it, so that's twenty bright and twenty dim. So. So that is the entrance right there. And in addition to that entrance, we also now have a slot here and a slot here. And many in the ceiling, I'll take it. Oh, yeah, and then there's the, uh, oh, opening, yeah. the opening in the ceiling <laughs> where they all came out. It's, it's really only a tent sort of by, you know, in concept. So... <laughs> The opening's there, but I cannot see it here. I would say that in much in the same way that there is a door that you would be able to get a shot off, but it would be at um, partial cover. Okay. Um, could I do that same thing from here? Could I see it as he yells and it has partial cover or whatever? Uh, yeah, I... one. Yeah, yes. Okay. I will do that then. Um, all right. Let's do a good one with the ring of the scorpion. That's not a good one. All right. Uh, as you use the ring, it fizzles. Oh, it's a magic item too in there. All right. Oops. That brings us to the Meloths, which are very dead, which will also bring us to Persephone. One went out for the Meloths. All right. Does this look like something I could grapple? Or would it's I just possible. It? There, it certainly has demonstrated that it has physical elements to it. I mean, it, it is able to hold a sword. It has done damage. Um, it looks like it is able to move in a way that is not the way a living creature should move. However, um, you think you could potentially grapple it it looks like it could be grappled i guess is okay. what i would say it's not like a crazy thought okay Actually, um, um what is your passive perception 15 15 as you watch it move and you see bits and pieces of it phase in and out just by having looked at it you think it's probably immune to grappling okay 
Um, then I think about doing that, but then I don't. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna hit it with my sword. Uh, right. Ah, 20 to hit. 20 is a hit. Seven piercing. <laughs> Seven piercing. Very good. It doesn't seem to have done as much. Wait, no. Never mind. You've got oh, it's a your is sword. Yet un, you've got yet unnamed sword. How dare you make a suggestion? I oh, sorry. <laughs> Ponzi, Ponzi. It is. It definitely did damage. And as it, it you stab into it, it All right. hisses uh, at you. I do it again. Little jabby jab. Ah, oh, that does not hit. A 10. 10 does not hit. Um. I bet this won't do anything, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, dagger. Not magic eight. No. Does not hit. Um, then I'm just going to... S- oh, if I step out of the way, I'm going to give it an attack of opportunity. You right? are. Yes. Well, I don't you... What? I could go like here, though, right? Without you could. Giving an attack? Yep. Okay, I just... Do you that have that much absolutely movement? Trait. How much movement did you have left? Oh, uh, where was I? Here? No, here? I believe you were. Um, nope, gosh, I didn't. I You're right. I don't. Go, I don't go anywhere. But uh, I don't remember where you were. But I, I, I'm I trust you that. Right okay, there. thank you. Uh, right. So your turn is done, which will bring us to Lulu. Lulu flies behind you, Persephone, and out the door to there. And she turns and blasts one more time. This is her last blast. Wow. The day. Steve goes away. Or yep. Steve. Yes, that's right. As she comes out, Steve <laughs> vanishes <gasps> out of existence. Sorry. And she attacks. <laughs> I'm having a night. <laughs> it makes, um, it makes its, let's see, dexterity saving throw. That is a fail. Oh my goodness. Is this the one? Him. Is this the one? <laughs> no, it was the other ones. Okay. So, once again, out comes the blast from Persephone. Uh, <laughs> <not> Persephone. <laughs> Sorry. Not a partic- that rat is not really sitting with her well. It's uh... <laughs> as this cone comes blasting out again. And as it does, you're witnessing that around in the area, there is now activity as the red caps and the mad caps are all <laughs> chattering back and forth to each other. And there is a, a bit of a bing, 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 It's happening in the fort. Um, oh, okay. Shit. So that will bring us to Silas. Now, I've got a clarification on movement rules because okay. different DMs do things different ways with moving into party member space. So uh, apologies, but I can go 5'10". I've got 20 feet of movement left yet. Okay. Um, what is this table's ruling on moving into a party member space through it or into it and back out? Because I'm assuming that if I just go ahead and take this 510, mm-hmm. even though I have reach, I'm going to assume that based on this flap and all that stuff, I could not actually reach the thing with an attack. That is a correct assumption. Okay, so what is your what is this table's ruling on movement as far as moving through? Um, it's a good question because it's changed a Double bit over it. the various games. Um, the moving through an ally space still requires it still counts as difficult terrain. Mm-hmm. So it will cost you double movement to move through uh, Falkrin's space. Um, First you cannot be Persephone. I'm sorry. Yes, Persephone is... Under the white bar. Yes, yeah. under the white bar. So now she's not. Um, then you would make an attack at disadvantage if you do it from her space. Because you are squeezing into her space. Um, then, a ruling on my table. When you leave an ally space, Um, unless you take the disengage action when you do, then any creature that is threatening that space can choose to take its attack of opportunity either on you or on this person's space that you leave. Okay. 
from the space, I've got a ally wow. that can see and hear me. Mm -hmm. This is the start of a new round. No one has used any reactions yet. Correct. Start of a new round. So at this point, I'm actually going to say, I'm I am going to use Commander Strike. Okay. Uh, adding a superiority dice of two. Sorry, but I'm going to uh, direct Persephone take that thing down, and she gets a melee attack. Very good. With an added superiority dice. So she gets to just make an, uh, I believe it's the Rapier of the Swashbuckler. Yes. yes. No? Oh, I've wasted but, it. Uh, 13 plus. 13 plus two. Two? From, which is a hit. Does oh. have a yeah. So it's nine different. points of piercing. Magical piercing. Indeed. So that was... And I use my attack. I forego one of my attacks to use my bonus action. Mm -hmm. And that, therefore, is all I've got at this point. Got it. Okay. Well, well, no, you... Commander Strike is a bonus action? When I take the action... Uh, read it. Uh, let me let me post it. When I so you only lose one of your attacks, Silas. I yeah, you have, can. I only have one attack. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. If I was a single class fighter or single class paladin, oh, then perhaps oh, I would have an extra attack. Because right. you uh, you action surge. That's how you got two attacks last. I got time. action that's, surge last time, but I that do not was yet exactly have an extra my question as well. No, yes. so, so one I, attack. I, I only have one attack currently. I can do all sorts of cool stuff, but I can only do it once. Mm. But, but by, I took the attack action on my turn, and I forego my attack, but, and I use a bonus action to direct. So I lost everything. By Vandria, you have done enough in this particular combat, Silas. Um, Jax, go go, go politer. Um, how how tall is the ceiling? Fifteen feet. Uh, 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 I okay, so I will move. <laughs> use, use your bone wing. Oh. No, no, I had this image of Jax using his expandable pole to like shoot himself up into the air. That's what I was like, thinking. Hot shot. Really? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You go, beautiful. go, gadget, ten foot pole. <laughs> beautiful it. bastard. Amazing. Gets you <laughs> Jax is not an artificer, but no, he could use acrobatics it with gets his pole. You up to ten acrobatics. Feet. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. but he's an absolute. I was hoping to it. try and do it as a. St I mean, no, he the creature wouldn't expect it, so I was wanting to know if it could be like some sort of stealth move. Well, I mean, you'd still get a uh, sneak attack on him because he's engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I can't. It can't let you use it stealth because that re stealth requires an action. So if, if you, I, I will allow you to use it in a way that it is. Here's used what as I wanted a to do. As opposed, I to wanted a, to as run to an and pole vault through the hole. With okay. my dagger out and then land, land, in, <laughs> and land here. That's that's going to be a straight strength check off the pole vault, right? Uh, Acrobatics for me. Oh yeah, um, oh. It's, it's a movement, so it would be based on. But I'm using your a, jumping flat jumping movement, right? But I'm using a pole for acrobatics. W the way I'm envisioning this flap here at the beginning of the thing that that will not allow you i don't think to get exactly where you want to get that yeah. is that square is completely closed off by the flat Which one this one he's going up the hole isn't it oh, I'm, to, I'm talking about i'm talking about pole vaulting through the roof a hole oh, in the roof holding through the roof that's why i'm saying it's yeah it gets you up there but then it's some type of check to, to see if you have enough movement to clear the lip mm -hmm. all right so we're gonna make this we're gonna make this two checks both of them part of your movement because you're using the um, the expandable pole, yeah. which will shoot you up for part of it. And I'm going to say that pulling that out is your interact with object. Okay. So you've got your dagger in one hand, you've got your pole in the other. Um, it expands, you get up 10 feet. So I will need a um, athletics check to jump through the roof. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. I don't know what I, oh, I, did, oh. I didn't I didn't roll with inspiration, so do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you do. Oh, press the button. Um yes, eighteen. Well, well. And eighteen is enough. So you all see Jax <laughs> up and then he I'll be balances, back in a bit. He, 
bounces on the pole and jumps through the hole in the roof where the smoke was escaping and where in all of the crawling crawls uh, cr cr crawling claws came as well. So he pops out the roof. Now I will need an acrobatics check to see whether or not you land where you want as you slide down the side of okay. the... I want to land here, if I can. Okay. Acrobatics. Acrobatics. Take, take off my inspiration. Oh, come 21. On, come on, come on. 21 is enough. You land right where you want to. Right right next to the thing. That's my goblin. Make Surprise, an attack. motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> add, add a one because you're flanking. Oh, he gets an attack too. I'll miss now. I'll be a natural one. Oh, 26. Um, I was, yeah, I was going to make... Um, Depending on what he rolled, I was going to make it uh, take his action to do. But yes, because of the high rolls, you get them all. Uh, that is a hit. All of what? Sorry. Uh, you were able to do both the <laughs> athletics and the acrobatics oh, as part of your movement. 21 say. damage. 21 and damage. Fury of the small. 28 okay. damage. 28 damage. <laughs> all right. Stick it. It's still up, although it is looking like it is barely there. Eeked. Yeah. Well, I'll use Fury of the Noblin Gobel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Wait a minute. Um, um, Pixie Quinn just gave you 10 more damage points. No. <laughs> She's <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> but I can just imagine that next next turn, yeah, Island, Island's just going to survey this situation and like pick her nails or something. I was going to oh. shout out, Yislin, use the pole. It's fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as as uh, Jax leaves, by the way, the, the pole just <laughs> kung, 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 falls on the ground. <laughs> That is not going to be her choice, uh, course of action. Um, okay, Just image so... of like Typhon and Yuslin looking at each other, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is this right. group? Yuslin, uh, it is your uh, turn. Is this correct? If I'm going uh, through the flap effectively? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move Yuslin there. Um, she's in the dark, but. Um, Steve, so okay, oh, yeah, I will uh, reveal that for you, um, Sean. I, I don't want to do this again, like I did last time. Based on the picture you saw, that's a humanoid creature, correct? Yes, it looks humanoid. I'm gonna cast hold person on it because it's not hold person is not a grapple, right? No. All right. If, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna be irritated. Okay, I'm gonna cast it's hold so person. It doesn't humanoid, work on dead. It doesn't work on yeah. dead though. Oh, is, really? Is the Shadow Assassin undead? You'd, you'd know that. I, I would know that. I didn't realize that that's not a thing. Okay, well then with my bonus action, I'm going to You don't die. know that it's undead. However, you do see it. That's that's pretty undead. That's undead. We know that's undead. <laughs> okay, then uh, with my bonus action, I'm going to dash. So Okay. Uh, um, I was so excited to do that. Five. Why is he not moving? Go. Five. 10, 15, 20, and I will make a attack with my short sword. Okay. Oh, you used the pole. Uh, did, it, did it click the button? And before you resolve it, Sean. Um, oh, 16. 16 is a hit. <laughs> oh, not 10. The final blow is yours, Miss <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Damn it! Um, watching, watching, uh, uh, watching Jack's pole vault out of it. Eastland just immediately runs around as fast as she can. She does a diving jump uh, and rolls into a ball, popping out right on the other side. And as she jumps, she just takes her Hellfire Sword and rips it up the top of uh, of that monstrosity. Um, as the blade passes through, the fire of it sort of consumes it. Uh, its body begins to split, and then you see it reach up. Uh, the, the fire comes up, and you see it go to scream. And as it does, the f smoke just dissipates, and there is nothing remaining but vanishing smoke. Very well done, everyone. That was incredibly impressive. I just wanted to add... I didn't need to do that. 
I could have just moved 30 and stabbed it between, <laughs> between Falcon's I legs. Say, I knew that. I'm sure. Isn't that's a, that, that's isn't another reason why. No. That's another reason why I didn't. didn't isn't it an make action to use? No, <laughs> no, Jax, you needed to do that. Like I, it, I needed it, to do it. Just needed I wanted to be to. done. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just however. <laughs> In the future, Jax, you should be uh, uh, be aware that um, it does require an action to use your pole. Yeah. Oh. Unle unless it's rule of yeah, court. it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, seeing as how you could have either you could have just gone out and I done didn't the measure exact it before, thing. and I could have just gone between Falcon's legs. That, yep. that would have been my thirty <laughs> movement. Does this make Jax a pole dancer? Uh, yeah. Pole uh, well, He's definitely a tiny dancer. Oh. Hold him close. Always. Tony Danza. Wait, is he a humanoid? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, let me get us to some better music. Mm. Actually, yeah. Okay. So, Falcon as this creature dissipates, the, can I ask you are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, unfortunately, your um, the area is very very busy and mm -hmm. you see um all sorts of uh, action happening all around you as um apparently there is uh, an attack happening um although you look around you seem to be the only ones that it was taking place and you can hear the sounds of um engines revving in the back um on the other side of the wall um and uh, then a uh loud screeching sound as the as the engines rev up and with a few javelins that seem to be launched by something come over the wall and land inside the fort um just do, 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 not doing any damage but distracting and you can look around and see a few others uh that are just lying around um the large forces of fionar begin to withdraw leaving behind a another war machine this one in excellent shape excellent um and there was a loud loud uh roar and a cloud of smoke and dust the remaining war machines leave And the just as they do, you see Mad Maggie coming, walking out, being followed by Mickey. And she's just like, what? What happened? An attack by your fellow warlord. I pole vaulted through the roof. Very interesting. I trust that none of you have been too horribly hurt. We all look at Falcon. <laughs> she just spits. <laughs> like a big wet gob of blood. Oh my. I do apologize for this egregious assault and the stain that it places on my hospitality, especially in light of all that you have done. To the victors go the spoils, I think. Please allow me to take back this piece of junk. And she points at the um, the scavenger. You are welcome to take this. And she gestures to this other machine, this far deadlier and better equipped machine. I'm driving. That Fionor has been forced to leave behind as the forces that she sent to steal Quietus were completely annihilated. You still have a little time left, so... I think, I... Falkrin, we need to May have I... a talk about that weapon. May I have my sword, please? Where is it? I have it. I gave it back to her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. No, there, right. there were no more tricks. That is, that yeah. is well-deserved. Are, okay. are we? Is there any impending attack or damage or anything of that nature? Like we're, well, not that you can looking see. at our surroundings. I mean, we're in hell. Yeah, but yeah. There's, there, uh, no... there's 
there's still quite a bit of activity happening there. The, the camp, the, the fort is definitely on alert and you can see all of the ballista sort of moving around and looking around and you see uh, Barnabas coming up and begins to float to the top and float higher and higher and higher. And you see him scanning the horizon. He floats back down. Um, you're welcome to make a perception check. Anybody? Hmm. Sixteen? No, Jack's got an eighteen. Eighteen, fourteen. Looking around, you can see in the distance, much as they appeared first in dust and smoke, now they are disappearing just over the horizon. Um, Fionor and her remaining um, crew, they are gone. So it was her huge battle wagon and just one of the other uh, yes, smaller huge battle machines. Wagon, a similar uh, an identical one to the one that yeah. she left behind okay um her mesoloths yeah and her crawling crawling claws yeah she is quite diminished yeah well good because first chance i get i'm gonna kill that bitch oh Actually. i like killing I think I might have found a suitable body for my replacement. Ah, uh, Persephone perks up with that. <laughs> well then, only maim her slightly. Uh, Interesting. Disgusting. Uh, Jax, you want to scour the, uh, the spoils for any other items that might be hidden in there? Coins and such. The madcaps and redcaps are distracted at the moment. This would be a good time, perhaps. Get in there. Oh, Hell's bells, yeah. I will do so. I say With 14. 14. Eastland's got some. I was going to look through it too, and he doesn't need. Uh... Eastland is not an investigator. Oh, uh, invest. Okay, okay. I was thinking sleight of ooh, hand. But 26. Yeah. All right. Well, sure. That a boy. There's right. nothing in here. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, there is. Let's see. <laughs> Jax, with a 14, you were not able to find anything. However, Typhon, you were able to find whatever it is that Falkran lost. Oh. You, oh, I was thinking you find it in my the... pockets. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. That is uh, it's my two hand axes and uh, my warhammer. Two hand axes and warhammer have been mm -hmm. returned to you. Um, however, the creatures that came to attack you, none of them had anything of value on them. What about oh, on the war machine? The coins in there. The Can mesoloths. Um, the, the both machine? the mesoloths have these long serrated tridents. So, like the tridents have a, a, a an end on them that they can be used to pierce, but they also have a blade on one side. Looks like it can can be used to slash. Um, but. Uh, and, and you're welcome to take them. They are uh, considered just tridents that they, you can have the choice to do either piercing or slashing damage, your choice. Um, they are not magical. Um, you uh, probably not any better than anything you already have. I will go and search um, on, the, uh, on our new machine to see if there's any hidden treasures. All right. Ooh. Just um, make sure that we don't spend more than an hour doing this so we can still complete our long rest. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's been right. 59 minutes, everyone back in bed. Yes. Right. 70. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> as you come over there, Chuka and Clonk are there, and they're both sort of, um, you know, crouched on various parts of machinery, and they both have uh, heavy crossbows, and they're just sort of looking around, and they see you coming over, and one of them is, uh, um, uh, Chuka says, It's a fine day for staying alive. It is. It is broken. You didn't talk much, do you? I talk loads, apparently. Too much. <laughs> True statement. And you're, what are you doing, Jax? You're investigating the thing yeah. to see if it has any? Um, any coins in there? No coins. Damn. Uh, Tuka and Clonk have been over this thing, and having the fact that they left it in here when they went out they probably made sure that there was nothing um fiona and her forces probably made sure that there were no nothing of value in it while it was in for repair 
Mm, understood. So this is my vehicle now. Um, I believe it has a crew of eight. Let me double check. Which one is this? Do we this know? is the... Um, oh, brother. Um, <laughs> it's the one for which we will get full stats next session. Yes. Mm, yes. I have them. I have them now. The Although that is, that, that is appreciated. Um, let's see here. It is the... Not the scavenger, not the... I think it's the tormentor. It's called the destroyer. Here we go. Yes, it is the tormentor. So it has these scything blades on either side of it. So as you go by something, you can use them to cut things up as you drive by. Um, much more useful in terms of combat than the scavenger, although the scavenger has its uses as well. I'll call this the Jacksonator. <laughs> so are we allowed to look at the stats of each? Of course, yes. I was just uh, looking. So the Tormentor has only a crew of four, and it has about 60 right. hit points, as opposed to the Scavenger having about 150. Yeah. yeah. The Scavenger is far more um, beat up. It's far, it, it, it has, um, it's, has its hit points, but its AC is much lower than what is listed because of the armor that the damage it has taken. OK. Um, but that can be repaired. Um, right. The, Is there uh, any way to combine scrap one for another or something? Like, would it be better to scrap you want this? To, like combine the two. Together? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the parts from our quarry to to um, fix up the one that will actually fit the entire party. Perhaps it is possible. However, it I, I don't take, know. I'm just. It will I, take some time. Sort of brainstorming wow. here about what we would want to. I mean, because yeah, I mean, if yeah. only four of us can be in the other one, two in a devil's yeah. ride. How, how many how many war boys can we fit into this thing? Ha, <laughs> yeah. There are only, but to, to, I should say, to drive them, um, it only takes one person to drive them. True. So uh, you can have all three. You might have to negotiate with Mad Maggie some more in terms of that. Um, ah. But um, that's a lot I'm of salt like, I'm liking or, the sound of that. I, you could don't have forget the, the cost of, of operating them. Is, right. You know, we we still if we can fit, it might be better to. Um, Plus, do we do we know it, that? You yet? know, that's the, logical. Uh, length I think of we, the soul coin charge well, is, in the furnace. The is there furnace? also. Sorry, um, no, you're right. So this is. This is information that you would have learned in just being in Fort um, Knucklebone, the various investigations that you've done of the machines, observing things like that. A, um, a coin. Let me see here. I was actually just thinking that because Jax is small, he wouldn't count as a full body. So Silas, Typhon, Falkron, and Persephone could all climb aboard the one machine. And then, then we'd be um, fine. I would have to have the captain's chair, though. I mean, there could be a rope. Well, so my other, else, we could my other behind. thought was that could we should, use? Could we use? Oh the, yeah, the dark elf. Yeah. Could we use the grappling claw to hold on to the devil's ride? So we essentially have like the two big trucks driving around, and then we have a little smaller ride to be like if if someone needs to peace out or we need someone to start running scouts. To be fair, could, though, Jack should be on the devil's ride, right? Oh, Not absolutely. The, the motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Evil can evil Jacks. Oh yeah. All right. Um, so a soul coin, uh, when you put it into a furnace of these machines, it consumes it instantly, and it uh, it uh, destroys all of the charges. Each soul coin has three charges. Um, so however many charges it has, that's how much fuel then that your machine has. Uh, one charge is twenty four hours, two forty eight hours, three seventy two hours. Um, that is all you know. That's a lot. However, um, those of you with experience in religion are probably aware that there are consequences. In religion? Is that, are you? Uh, that's, yeah, make, ooh, a, make a religion check. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. What do you think the consequences would be, Falkron? Oh, I think the consequences are the fact that we are literally using souls. Are you, 
I already clicked it. I was going to ask right. to help me, but so, right. oh, oh, oh. Well, then let me let is me that, help you. Is out. that anyone rolling or just those who are proficient? Um, when you said those of you who know religion, I, I know said, religion. I would, I would, do, I would permit Silas. Uh, you've you've studied religion, although you're not proficient. You can make a religion check. Okay. Hey, oh, thank is. God. All right. So, thinking about the nature of souls and the nature of these coins, Silas. While there is a charge in one of these coins, the soul is still in existence, although it is being siphoned. It doesn't have hit points. It becomes less of itself, but it's still itself, and it can still be recovered and released if you figure out a way to do such a thing. Once it is consumed in the flame, it is utterly destroyed. I, I share that information with everyone quickly. Is there a way to determine the soul's alignment? You would have to use a charge to find out information about the soul in particular. The longer you hold on to them, the more you will begin to glean about certain personality traits, but something that specific would actually require a charge to make contact with the soul inside the coin. But these souls themselves were forged in I mean the coins themselves are, are forged in hell we know that much and it's assumed that a soul in hell like well we're in hell aren't we true we're, we're one not, of our one of our own is down here in a soul coin already that's true that's true Un mm. I don't I don't see at least a few of us spending an unnecessary soul coins without having huge problems with it emotionally. Right. And, and there's no other way to, to fuel these machines, correct? None that you're aware of. Oh, the mechanic. So if we use two of the charges to work the machine and then find a way to free the soul that at least achieves our purpose and still gives the soul its existence. Well, I think what we learned was that inserting the coin could destroys it. So there's no using yeah. two charges for the machine. You insert it and it's, it's obliterated right. you, into you the You cannot engine. get the coin out once it's been oh, put into the furnace. I see. Yeah. Is so there it's, any way to tell what kind of I soul mean, the coin? To say, okay, to say that you can't get them out, it would require actually disassembling and going into the actual furnace it would be an extremely intensive a repair job um, to both get in and to get out with the coin. It is not impossible, though. But the minute we put the coin into the furnace, it is being like consumed. This... Got it. Got it. Okay. You need to be able to disassemble the flux capacitor. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a day. I'll make this thing run on biofuel. We just need a one, Mr. One... Fusion. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Perhaps. Unfortunately, Jax, I don't think you can tie a string to it and throw it down and pull the string back up. Like uh, the arcades. Like that Torbrand. That's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he could, but it would stop the machine. Yeah. Um, but this this might be something that we put together some summarized bullet points that we can do as a handout so that we understand our current knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, you can ask questions of the various people, and then once you do, essentially all of the information that is on the handout for these machines will be available to you. What about a... I, mean, I, had, assu I had assumed that that would happen like before yeah, you it's, left. It's, you would... it's the middle of the night right now. Yeah. What passes we've, for night. And we've only got 43 minutes left before we can finish our long run. <laughs> That's right. <No. laughs> so, um, looking over these machines, you realize that you have possibilities. Um, you have a supply of soul coins. You have the beginnings of your own fleet of uh, these vehicles, regardless of how you attempt, how you decide to div divvy them up amongst you. Um, and you can all return to your tent for a long rest if you wish. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll just un untick the fury of the small and that's it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Get your pole back. I have oh, yeah. to stop saying things like it's almost about to die when I'm dealing with Jax. Um, so, <laughs> was it 
considered not of this plane, the uh, crawling claws, not native to the plane. Or would we have a little? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a new pet. Cowards! Because <laughs> that's a weird. That is a weird, a weird question. Uh, wording. Yeah. yeah, but just if it I would pops say back if it was up, maybe all of all of us plane, against but... one swarm. Yeah, I think right, I don't well, think it would be an issue of being able to defeat it after the fleeing, but just well, yeah. What I will say is that in the time that it took for you to come out and kill the shadow and then deal with Maggie and watch the various things doing it, that you assume that it popped back in. You actually felt the spell end after your minute, your yeah. concentration dropped. When you go back in, they're nowhere to be seen. Depends if it was summoned or not. If it was summoned, and obviously it would disappear anyway, probably. <clears throat> so, you may all have your long rest. Ah. Uh. The next morning, I need Jax, Eastland, Falkran, Persephone, and Silas to make wisdom saving throws. Oh, Not okay. will, okay. wisdom saving Ooh, throws. What's this for? For the corrupting influence. Maybe he's going to give us stuff. Ooh, so uh, Silas, I have a 14. Next oh, up is Eastland. All right. I'll roll a 19, so I did something right. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope. <laughs> 15. My dice 15? came up 11, and then I have a plus 2, and it says I rolled an 11, but whatever. Yeah, let me see here. Uh, no, you rolled a rolled 9 a plus 2. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Eastland, you did not need to roll. I didn't think so. Okay. Yeah. So Jax, Falkron, Persephone, and Silas. Falkron, Persephone, Jax, Silas, is that yours? Yes, yours is up there. Got it. Um, okay. No problems. Ooh, what was this for? What was it for? Oh, thank God. Am I, uh, am I still feeling less strong than I did? Uh, no, with your long rest, you have recovered your strength. Oh, thank the gods. <laughs> oh, thank the that gods. Was four points. I was like, dude, that's a mess. I was like, I'm going to kill... One D thing. One D four <laughs> off of your strength from that particular enemy, oh. um, which you don't have to deal with anymore. That would what? have been. It was a very powerful ally that Fionor no longer has. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But, well done, all. Uh, you all owe uh, Silas um, and Jax a yeah. Uh, seriously, guys, nice a great deal. Job. Uh, I mean, uh, Paladin smited and. Rogues yep. sneak attacked. So, yep, yep, that is how it is done. Um, Damn. but we will end our session that here.